Carl, we begin with your new character. Um, uh, because it would be convenient if when the players emerge from the pit, they do it that you want to call. So, let us begin by, uh, uh, Billy, first of all, um, are we recording? Want to do a countdown? Oh, we're recording now. Hello to everyone watching in the future. Okay, so let's begin. So, um, tell us about, uh, a little bit about your character, and, um, and once we know a few things about him, we might explore all the way back. I'm into their ancestral past. Who are you? Okay. Uh, playing a Kaisi. I would say she probably comes up north, maybe uh, probably in the Narfel region. Maybe oh. uh, in a, a tribe up there. Excellent. Excellent. So Narfel is a truly blasted land, uh, a very long way from water deep indeed. Um, thousands of miles. And um, it's a savage land uh, of barbarians who have no idea of the ancient legacy of their own ancestors, of which they are kind of the inheritors, and, but, but, but they more often they shun their own heritage rather than embrace it. For their heritage is of demon worship. Um, so let's have a look at your tribe just briefly. Uh, there are a lot of demons out there, and they're all pretty much represented among the tribes of Narfel. Orcus, the demon prince of, of the undead. Demogorgon, the demon prince of, of savagery. And um, uh, Bratz, uh, who takes into his portfolio sex and perversions and other um, other debaucheries. Who among these, um, or, or perhaps one of your own, um, one much lesser known, one of which um, demon did your tribe serve, or were you one of the extremely rare tribes who refused to engage in this demonic legacy? Uh, I'm not too familiar on the demonology, but is there something... Like uh, the hunt or werewolf type of thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So two uh, demons are pretty savage creatures by nature, but there are two that really strive for dominance. One is a savage, feral, cannibalistic thing called Yinoghu that is, tends to be worshipped by gnolls and not many other creatures. And the other is Demogorgon himself. And Demogorgon is a two-headed monstrosity, sometimes called the first demon. Uh, right. Much more popular. And they probably are worshipping some perverted form of Demigorgon. Beautiful, beautiful. That would enable your tribe to uh, undertake a lot of um, uh, a lot of things that, that might, people might not associate with demon worship, because Demogorgon, while he is brutal and savage, he's two-headed, and he is also very cunning and um, and insightful and tricky. And um, so that dual nature enabled your tribe to uh, adopt um, technologies and cultural practices that the others would have shunned because they're just not smart enough at the end of the day. What do you think are some of the innovations that your people might have had in this blasted Bronze Age wasteland that your rivals did not? Uh, probably the true companionship of animals, where they're Beautiful. kind of given or raised alongside of their companion for life. Excellent. Excellent. Do your people have um, a, a totem for their own tribe, or do they give individual totems to individual peoples or something? Uh, probably more individualized, maybe on the family level. Wonderful. And your family's totem? Uh, polar bear. Beautiful, mighty, and, and uh, yeah, majestic, um, intelligent, um, wonderful. Okay, um, uh, uh, there are a, a thousand and one reasons why, why, might, why one might want to turn one's back on Narfel and never return. You've traveled thousands of miles, and the, the journey that you've taken must have been even longer. If you were to travel as a, as a raven does, it would still be two and a half 
three thousand miles. But of course, yeah, you don't travel as ravens do. How did you get there? Um, probably would have gone by water. Yeah, or at least as much as I could. Wise move. Eastern Reach over here. Beautiful, beautiful. And so, um, uh, traveling through the what we call the cold lands and across the Great Dale, I um, one of the largest areas in all of the world that is controlled by druids. They have a kind of um, a, a council. A, a, the, the various villages live under this grand supreme council of druids, and the druids don't tell them what to do. But the farmers and the villagers and the hunters know well enough that they should listen when the druids do tell them to do so. Mm -hmm. So you would have experienced these cultures, and uh, but what an eye-opener it would have been to have then crossed the Sea of Fallen Stars with its pirates and its trade, its galleons, and with their cannons. What, what wonders did you see in this, um, in this majestic sea of, its, of sea elves and kraken? Oh, that was a living nightmare for me. Never wanted to go to the water again. <laughs> Everything that could have went wrong did. Boat capsized by a storm, picked yeah. up by pirates, traveled around the pirate isles for a while, got away from them on another boat. That's pretty dramatic. That's yeah. pretty dramatic. <laughs> When you finally reach uh, the western shores, perhaps of uh, Westgate or maybe of Cormier, um, you can decide uh, you know, which, which direction you travel. How, how did you then get on to Waterdeep from there? Because it's still another thousand miles or more. Uh, so probably around Westgate, I would have uh, joined up with another band of adventurers. Just Beautiful. Traveling around. And along the route you followed, and all roads lead to Waterdeep sooner or later. Mm -hmm. And so now here you are, a relatively experienced adventurer. Um, you kind of, um, you've been looking around for an adventuring party, and you thought you might have found one um, shortly after you arrived. But, I mean, I don't know, like, do, do, do you have to take a number or a ticket or something? Because this adventuring party's full. They don't even want you. It, we don't need a warrior, we don't need a wizard, whatever you are, we've already got one, thank you very much. Um, yeah, alright. But fortunately, you've at least made one friend here, and so that's a good thing. And, um, and now we take a look at, uh, at your character, Mark. So, in, in a few words, uh, what, what's your character? Um, a uh, abandoned tabaxi. Who was taken up Fantastic. by monks and trained in a monk tradition, and then was pushed out in the world to go do as a monk would do. Excellent. And you're are you part spellcaster as well? Monk war wizard. Beautiful, beautiful. Would you like the monastery who took you in to be a mad, you know, like monks of Mistra, the goddess of magic, for example, or something different? Well, the monk I'm going for is the uh, uh, tradition of elemental. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. All right. Um, beautiful, beautiful. So, a hundred years ago or more, 150 years ago, um, we sailed west. Uh, when I say we, I mean people of the Sword Coast, people of Waterdeep and uh, Baldur's Gate and other cities on the Sword Coast sailed west and they crossed the trackless sea as had never been done before. And they reached a faraway land and among those faraway lands was Mastika. And, um, among the people in Mastika were the Tabaxi. That was a long time ago, 150 years ago. <clears throat> and the Spell Plague happened and the Spell Plague changed everything. It stopped all trade between um, Mazteca and uh, the Forgotten Realms and, and Faerun. And indeed, it ripped Mazteca completely from the world and then brought it back a hundred years later. So the question I want to ask you is, were, uh, are you one of the people whose ancestors settled here on this continent 150 years ago? Or are you part of the second wave of migration who only just turned up? in um, the, uh, 
this, this in the West uh, during your own lifetime? That I do not have an answer for because I was uh, um, abandoned as a kitten, as it were. <clears throat> so the monks took me in. I was only two or three. So I have no. Okay. Cool. No ancestral ties now. You can only guess. It's um the monks seem to think that you were probably one of the first generation, uh, someone who is descended from um tabaxi who settled here a century ago but they have no proof they have no way of knowing and the spell plague threw up all sorts of strange things you might have been brought from another world entirely another time even um it's simply impossible to tell now the monks lived a relatively stoic life a frugal life they don't have a lot of good food a lot of luxuries their their beds aren't comfortable and when they run out of supplies. There's nowhere to go and replace them. How did you find this stoic lifestyle? Well, well as a tabaxi, I think genetically we're not uh, prone to uh, possessions, having possessions. So I, I guess it, it didn't bother me that much in, in that, uh, you know, I would find something to play with. And then quickly get bored of it and go find something else, like another rock or twig. So uh, it, it didn't it didn't bother me in the least. Cool. Although your short attention span was frowned on by the monks, your the, the easiness at which you were pleased and satisfied filled them with a great amount of joy. I hesitate to say pride because the monks don't see pride as a positive thing, rather an indulgence. Um, these, um, uh, these monks, um, they took uh, magic very seriously as a, as a force of nature. And, um, they were attempting as a philosophy to try to blend the various paths of magic into a, a kind of a, a single thread. And that involved pulling on the forces of elemental fire and elemental air mixing elemental water and elemental earth and combining them all into uh, what they hoped to create was the philosopher's stone, a uh, kind of metaphysical uh, concept of purity. Sooner or later, you were driven out or abandoned or simply walked away from uh, this monastery. What was it that, uh, that caused you to leave? Was there a conflict or did you simply grow out of it? Or do you intend to return one day? Well, I, seeing that they were blending the elementals uh, into a fighting style, basically, uh, I said, well, why don't we take this a next step and not just have the elementals, but the, uh, the spell world into a fighting style, combine them all into a monk fighting style. So I'm kind of making my own hybrid monk fighting style. So I went into the world to learn magic to bring back and add to that fighting. Excellent, excellent. And so um, the monks <laughs> looked on you with a little bit of disdain when you first came up with this idea. Uh, the old ways, the old traditions are best. Why would you, why would you seek to, to try something so radical and untested? But they relent. In the end, they relent. And when you finally pack up and you, with your humble and meager possessions set out from the nether mountains up here uh, north of the high forest, when you finally set out from your uh, from the monastery of um, of the four elements, you uh, you um, discover that there is a no one to teach you. In, in the nearby cities of Silvery Moon or Everland, there simply isn't um, anyone willing to take you on. Uh, when people want an apprentice, they want someone young. They want someone uh, obedient. They want someone who's going to learn quickly. But you've already made your way into the world. You're already set on a path, and, and, and they uh, you, you find that every time you apply for, for some kind of tutelage, you're rejected. So your quest continues, um, and uh, you inevitably hear about uh, Halasta Black Cloak, the, uh, a wizard so powerful that he constructed an entire reverse city called Undermountain beneath uh, beneath Waterdeep, and, and 
and all and so many reasons pull you to Waterdeep. Um, the, the promise of tutelage, the promise of um, of, of more magic, of being able to access, access great libraries and um, and simply hone your skills with uh, with other people. And so you now you find yourself in the Yawning Portal, a um, a tavern in Waterdeep. Uh, still on your quest to combine magic with um, with martial arts, and um, you've made a friend in that time. Uh, you've made a friend with Kaisia, a traveller from a distant land called Narfel, who um, has a has a tender spot for animals. Uh, so how between you? I, I didn't mean that, but <laughs> like that way. Um, but, but uh, between the pair of you, uh, how do you think your characters might have hooked up? What sort of um, quests might you have gone on together already? Uh, do you have any shared interests, anything like that? Um, well, I'm interested in hunting down dragons. So perhaps you're chasing a dragon down to learn about its elemental powers? Well, dragons are known for hordes with magic stuff in them. There you and go. Magic book. Maybe we found a quest to go hunt down a dragon, and he uh, figured out we're too weak to for it ourselves. Work for me. Sounds oh. good. Sounds good. All right. You've um. Yeah. So there's a quest to go and kill a dragon uh, that you've heard about. Apparently, there's someone in the yawning portal offering um such a noble quest, and um. But you can't do it by yourselves. Two people is not a um, there's not an army, and so you're waiting to find um, some other suitable candidates who you might be able to tag along with. And lo and behold, even as we speak, some people start coming out of the yawning portal. But first, um, is your character called Arion? Is that is that the Tavaxi? Area, area, area. Yeah. Excellent area. Do you have a picture at all? Because if not, I can give you one. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm working on it still. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Just handy to have token. And if we're going in into the undermountain, we're going to definitely need one. Um, yeah. I got a lot of tabaxi pictures. <laughs> uh, are you male or female? Up to you. All right. Death pussy it is. <laughs> Love that I have a lot of tabaxi pics in my hentai, I mean my anime <laughs> folder too. <laughs> yeah, in, in compromising positions, I'm sure. <laughs> Educational. Instructional. Uh, um, I won't worry about making these tokens up properly yet. If you go into Undermountain, I'll, I'll do it then because you can't. I just I won't worry about it. Um, okay, so the pair of you are, um, uh, are sitting at a table here in the Yawning Portal. The Yawning Portal is a world-famous establishment, a world-famous tavern, most notorious because it provides a direct link from the surface, from Waterdeep, down into, um, into Undermountain, perhaps the most notorious and along the largest dungeon in any world. And as you wait, drinking your um, uh, thinned ales, uh, eating your stale peanuts, and uh, smelling the uh, beer-soaked floor, the sound of a chain, chink, 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 chinks up, and people begin to emerge. Who comes first, and what do they have with them? I do believe Lucius was going up first. I'm not sure who with. 
Yeah, I'll join you. Let's do it. Yeah, so I'm slowly rising as a mist, aren't I? Yeah, Lucius and, and Sanj will come up. Lucius is really badly wounded. Like, he took a great axe to the chest five minutes ago. Um, and, yeah, we've got the gaseous form following us up. Well, uh, it looks like we've got some visitors then. Says Darren. Hi. Hey, well, well, come on, get, get out of there. You're looking worse for wear. <sighs> yeah, yeah, don't, don't rush me, Darren. Don't rush me. I'll have your strongest drink as well. Uh, make it two, please. Aye. Aye, that's you, Sha. Go on, Bunny, get to work. We're already working, Mr. Darren. Work harder. We've got more customers. I'm going to pull up and just sit down here. Well, looks like uh, he grabs a drink of his own and sits down with you. Well, it looks like uh, you certainly got into a bit of a scrap down there. Uh, not not under my mountain. My, a bunch of no good thieves tried to ambush us right before the bucket. Bastard! Yeah, we certainly showed them, didn't we? Huh. Hey, well, I tell you, it's uh, in my wandering down there. I found uh, the other adventurers to be the most dangerous sorts of all. Uh, tell me about it. Well, I will if you want, but that might have just been a euphemism. I'm not sure. Yeah, just a euphemism. Actually, we got something pretty interesting uh, mm. down there this time. Oh, is that so? I would say interesting, yeah, is an adequate description. I think so. Zevram, it's probably best for you to put it down outside. Shh. Hey, it's a... What is it? Is it a devil mist? A devil mist? Did someone dispel magic? That would not... I, that would be ill-advised. I would not recommend well, dispelling hey, I'm going to put a hand on shoulder, Sanja's shoulder and I... If he wants to dispel it inside, it's his own... <laughs> someone dispel magic! Um, Are you offering I, pay? Says uh, says a priest over in the corner. <laughs> oh, this! I'm gonna stand up, take my drink, and kind of like just move out this way a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Kill it! Kill it! And um, uh, yeah, your um, your dragonflies are um. Uh, uh, the, the the spell is dispelled, and uh, you revert to your regular forms. <laughs> With a dragon in tow. <laughs> <laughs> the, so uh, Zevram just appears out of nowhere and bang with this massive dragon behind him. Now, I someone, did, else had, did uh, someone else had giant ape going on me, polymorph, so I'm a giant ape. In yeah, China. exactly. <laughs> it turned to dead and giant ape on you, or polymorph on you, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All ah! of a sudden, a giant ape and a dragon appear. <laughs> Dernan, we said the Mark's probably going outside. outside. <laughs> I did. I did warn you, Dernan. I'm sorry, but I told you not to do that. And now there's a giant ape and a dragon in your um establishment. <laughs> <laughs> The bard breaks a string on his loot. <laughs> Dern leaps over the bar and grabs a great sword. <laughs> and we roll for initiative. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god, I'm not even ready for this crap. <laughs> we just slaughter everybody in the yawning portal. <laughs> what a great way to start. Where's my token? Um, this is you, but um, we don't have... Uh, yeah, you won't have control of it, I don't think, yet. But I might as well... I guess we're going to do it now. Um, all right. Um, hit points. All right. There we go. Tabaxi's have dark vision? 60 feet. Cool, oh, cool. That's right. See, see. Can you highlight me again. I didn't see myself. See, save change. 
Uh, there we are. Edit. Use to Save. Close. Drag. Drop. And now you might be able to use this token. See if you can move it around. Got it. Is it moving? Can you move it around? Yeah. Good, 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 good. Okay, good, it worked. Yeah. Alright. I'm not sure where mine is, but I don't think I need it for this. I think I'm still at the bottom of the hole. Makes sense. Alright, Kaisia. A giant ape carrying a dragon has just appeared in the bar. Um, the bartender has drawn a great sword, and uh, chaos is erupting. Uh, what do you do? I'm going to hide under the table. Excellent idea. You gain <laughs> XP. Lucius M. Catter. Has Bonnie bought me my drink yet? <laughs> she she is, is delicately trying not to drop it. I'll give her an extra gold coin as a tip and then take a seat at the table over here. She hurries over and, uh, and gives, you, gives you your drink. It goes the long way around. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna like begin to kind of like lift my hand up in protest and just like, but, and then see kind of Lucius sit down with his drink and, uh, all right, all right. Uh, just another day. And <laughs> I sit next to Lucius and rest my chin in my um my hand. Then that's yeah, that's me. If you damage that dragon corpse, we're gonna charge you for it, darn it. Your only companion, Ariok, has just hidden underneath the table as a giant ape carrying a dead dragon appears. I look down with total contempt. <laughs> and, uh, and let's see, the dragon is not a threat, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I guess I'm gonna. Well, how big is this ape? King Kong size. What? <laughs> yeah, so the Bionic, 15, Bionic portal has been destroyed. It's about to be, yeah, but not if Donan <laughs> chops its arms off first. <laughs> I am gonna use. <laughs> this is this gonna be so bad. So... My. My favorite spell. Boom. Into the into the into the ape. Into the ape. All right, apey. You you're, you're like a this, this wind blows up against you and, and like it blows the hair out of your face and then and then your fringe settles back in front of your eyes like a like a Water Brother cartoon. I get a nice breeze up my ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it. then I make my movement, which is to uh, run away. All right. Do you attack the uh, tabaxi as it as it flees? No. <laughs> Aldrich, it sounds like there's chaos up above. You're at the bottom of a 200 foot pit, are you, or are you in the basket, or where are you? Uh, I I'm the the last one, so I don't know if the uh. The basket has risen yet. Be, uh, the last thing I've done was uh, place a uh, Leviathan holy symbol upon the knocked out potion lady. <laughs> the uh, bucket goes into free fall and comes pl plummeting down towards both you and Lorvan. <laughs> both of you make dexterity saving throws to get out of the way. This is it. This is how I go out. I get crushed by a falling <laughs> <laughs> Bam! This bucket just comes out of nowhere and it connects the adrastria on the on the back of the head and then slow, swings there like a pendulum, uh, five feet off the ground. <laughs> you were in the bucket. <laughs> 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 that explains why it did so much damage. 
I guess it does. Uh, what do you do as the bucket begins to plummet, Ash? Uh, grab onto the rope. Excellent, excellent. Make a dexterity saving. Oh. Or acrobatics yes. check. <laughs> so, third character sheet open. Okay. Let's... So Dernan was was hauling Ash up, and then he goes, "Oh fuck, giant ape!" Drops exactly. the bucket. And jumps the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> and you're now swinging on the chain as it as it's like continues to plummet. You you know you run up the chain, never actually moving as the chain continues to drop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, giant eight. Um, sort of somewhat oblivious or not really understanding what everyone is on about uh, at the moment. I continue towards the door, and I push. Um, Three strings aside, just gently with the back of my hand. <laughs> and I, I, I drag the dragon corpse in front of me and I just start stuffing it through the door. I'm <laughs> 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 being manhandled by a giant ape! There's three strings. <laughs> I just look at three strings like. Put a finger up to my lips. <laughs> I'm being squashed. I'm being crushed. I'm being. I'm. I'm not stuttering anymore. You're. Awesome. He's <laughs> been scared out of his stutter. <laughs> uh, so Bjorn will stand up on his hind legs, on top of the table, and just start roaring. <laughs> 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 that's right. You go away, you giant ape. This is my territory. <laughs> you got it, bear. You fucking tell that bastard. Roar! <laughs> he gets up on the on the bar and roars himself and, and, and waves his waves his great sword at you. <laughs> All right, and it looks like the uh, the ape is um is gonna is gonna be the town watcher's problem very shortly. <laughs> <sighs> I'll kind of let out a deep sigh and walk towards the door so I can get him to put the dragon down in the right spot yeah. somewhere I'm where like, it won't be towed away. I'm like trying to keep the wings in, but they keep unfurling every time I try to push. So I'm like putting the wings in, pushing, they unfurl. I put the wings back in, pushing. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Oh. Who who are you people? Who are who people? Oh, I'll walk up to I guess Lucius and one one second. No, no, no. You need to angle it more, Zevram. If you roll it a little bit, then put it on an angle. It'll go straight through. I'm prepping a fireball spell. <laughs> no. Oh. Um, I turn around at Lucius and I just like push him with the back of my hand into his chest to like <laughs> show off. I oh, oh, fucking bastard. Just We need we need Ash to stop the spell. Although I think she might still be uh where where is Ash? I mean, like she's uh, climbing the rope right now. Yeah, so is it po is it but like can I look down into the hole and would I be able to see like Ash at all? Yeah, you can. Uh, Ash is, oh, she's almost at the top, and Dernan looks over and says, Oh, uh, you're, you're okay. You don't have to pay the fee. <laughs> um, Thanks, asshole. <laughs> oh, that's gracious, isn't it? Uh, Ash, when you get up here... Actually, no, we still need to get the, the corpse through the door, don't we? Oh, jeez. Well, I'm going to fix that wing problem. I'm going to make it a fried dragon. No, that, that won't be necessary. Uh, please refrain from doing that. that. That's an internal discussion. I think we're going to have fried chicken. I mean, fried dragon. For you will be executed if you do that. Oh, <laughs> if he even lasts until the watch arrives. Yeah, yeah just a, we'll just a warning. Back. You yeah. try and fireball my dragon corpse and I'll turn you into fried cat. He does mean that. I know. Hmm. Um, to answer your question, we're a, a ragtag party of adventurers, and we've been doing the rounds down in Undermountain. Uh, and as you can see, we got lucky. 
well, not so lucky as I gesture to Lucius's axe wound. Well, the dragon didn't cause that, did it? Uh, no, this was, uh... What, how did you describe them, Lucius? A band of petty thieves? I would say so. Zantarum dickheads. Hmm. Well, uh, here, let me help. I'll uh, cast cure wounds on you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that does help quite a bit. Uh, I'm at the bottom of the well and I'm gonna yell up, Durnin! Hurry the fuck up and pull the goddamn- Alright, it's on its bloody way, you fucking masochist! <laughs> yeah, so the bucket's down and uh, he starts winding it up. Uh, when I finally uh, get up and from the, the the pit, uh, I exit the bucket with an expression that, like, looks like the cat that caught the canary, and I just go up to this table, and I take this guy's drink, and I just, like, gulp down his ale. <laughs> and then I just, I throw, I throw a gold coin at him, and I just walk off over here, and go up to Bonnie, and just kind of just sweep her off her feet, and just give her a big kiss. Oh, oh Mr. Avery! You know, you cannot do that to a lady in, in the modern era. It's called sexual harassment. Ah, yes, but you know you wanted it. Oh, uh, I most certainly did not. And she, she slaps you across the face. Not right now. Not right now. I just kind of smile, and I just walk towards the group, and, uh, so, so what now? Just fucking push it through the doors, Evram! If you, you're gonna break the door, and Dernan's gonna charge you a heap of gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Who are you attacking? I'm punching it through the door. Go <laughs> <laughs> for damage. <laughs> and again, that'll do. Boom! Explodes. You unload. You break its wing bones; they just shatter within, and um, and yeah, it's uh, it's all twisted and mangled, but you get it out. Ah, oh, Severum, you fucking idiot! I'm gonna tap my crook on the ground and use it to cast a spell magic. <laughs> Meanwhile, as I climb out of the, out of the pit, I give Vernon his skull piece and just try and keep my head down and avoid being noticed during all this chaos. <laughs> now, which of you bastards cast the thunder spell? I'm Go on, who was corner. it? Uh, it was you, was it? Who? I'm just looking around. Yeah, I, I think it was my friend. Oh! He didn't want to hurt anyone. He was just scared. Each of them chairs is worth... Uh, uh, it's 17 gold. But, uh, I tell you what, if you give me 50, then that'll, that'll cover every, all the damages. I, I don't think the thunder spell hit any of the tables. I mean, I had to arrow it up at his nuts. Oh. Oh, well, that was tactical brilliance then. Good, good, well, well done. Well, that was very considerate of you. No, I definitely think the damage was done by the Thunder Spells, not the Giant Ape, so clearly it shouldn't be us that has to pay for it. Oh. Well, I... I, I, don't, I wouldn't want to have to get the Magisters involved. They'll, they'll throw in their own service fee. Why don't you just split the bill? Well, I've got a better idea. Why doesn't the priest who dispelled the cloud pay the bill? I did warn you, like, to leave the cloud as such. And subsequently, here we are. Yes, you're right! You're the one who dispelled the, 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 the cloud! Why don't you pay the bill at the temple? Uh, how about we get the fuck out of here while he's distracted? 
<laughs> I distinctly remember you saying that you wanted someone to dispel magic. I merely asked for it. In fact, you owe me 100 gold for my dispel magic. I bloody what? Fight, begins, fight, fight. That's riding him out of bill. Uh, yeah, Archa, maybe, maybe don't encourage this. Let's just leave while everything's okay. Yeah, I, I go outside and I immediately look around to see if I can find maybe a, a wagon or a cart or, or someone with a cart, I guess. Yeah, I'll go out. With it. Uh, okay, how big is this dragon? Because you're going to need more than a, you're gonna need a bigger cart. It's large. Well, I think it's like. Pounds? Yeah, it's 25. got like a wingspan of 30 feet or something. So yeah, I imagine it's quite big. You're going to need a boat. And it, it weighs. 2,700 pounds. Yeah, okay. Uh, card? No. Hang, hang on. How about we just go with the giant ape plan again? You're right to walk a couple of blocks, right, Zevron? Uh, I'd be attacked like Dernan back there. We'll Did escort you, you this time. Maybe <laughs> maybe uh, Sanj... Oh, wait, no. Sanj can't press the digitation. Maybe I can press the digitation like a bow tie on you and you will act like you're just heading for the circus. You know, I f I'm feeling very used right now. And you're doing a fantastic job. <sighs> Why can't one of you do the whole monkey business? Well, I already told you, it's very difficult for us to concentrate on the spell if our intelligence is halved. With you, it's not so much of a difference. <laughs> That's a fantastic no, point. Because he has no intelligence? I... I... Well, he is a very intelligent young that. man. I, I'm, I'm going to remember way. that, Lucius. Okay. I'm... Zavram, I'm just saying you're really helpful. We wouldn't be able to do this without you. All right, go on then, but... The Griffin Riders come. I'm killing one of you first. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Before it gets to that, perhaps I could loan a hand, says the Lester Silvermane, as he comes up. I happen to have a coach here. Uh, it's, I'm not sure it would be barely big enough to fit that creature in, but uh, I think that I think that it might make it. Uh, that, that's, that would actually be rather grand. On the way to Lester, we actually had something to talk to you about. Uh, and I have something to talk to you about. Oh, perfect timing, then. Very good. And he whistles and um, gets his own coach, talks to his coach driver who organises a, a second one, both of them very large. One contains the dragon, and one's big enough to contain um, uh, the, the, rest of, the rest of the group. Um, might I uh, introduce to you uh, a, a couple of associates, Kaisia and Aria. Uh, they uh, recent arrivals to Waterdeep that uh, I've uh, that I've been working. With. Uh, uh, hello there. Hmm. Greetings. Wait, um, are you the one that fluffed me? Is he still an ape? No. No, I, I, you don't look like... Uh, no. Nope. <laughs> give her a suspicious look. Mm. I give her a suspicious... I give him a suspicious look right back. Well, um, go on. Guys, why are you looking at each other like that? Never I mind. think it's love what at first about? sight. Oh. I'm thinking, oh, it's time for a rumble. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, anyways, that's... Okay. So, um... Jalesta, shall we... You yes. said you had something for us, or shall we go first? <laughs> hmm... Yes, well, I have many things to talk about. Perhaps we should get your your news out in the open first. Um. Well, first of all, it's pr 
probably worth mentioning that all of this, and I'll kind of point across everyone's injuries. We got ambushed by the Doom Raiders, just down in Undermountain there. You should be familiar with them, no? Hey, thanks a bit for a while. Um, yes, of course, of course. Uh, Zentar. I, I saw them going into Undermountain 36 hours ago, with my own eyes. Yeah, they won't be coming back. Good. Uh, but anyway, as a result of this, we've had a rather rough exit, and we're actually hoping to find some more work uh, above ground for now. Perhaps something we can start within a 10-day? Hmm. Fortuitous indeed. For I had hoped that Kaisia and Ariok would be able to find assistants who could help them um, with a particular quest that I... I'm just quite surprised to learn that you are uniquely suited for. For I heard you were dragon slayer. <laughs> you can say that. The proof is in the pudding. Ha. Indeed. This is no trivial matter, I should mention. As you know, since the spell plague has occurred, there has been a... Um, uh, it has been very difficult uh, to maintain any measure of uh, trade, any measure of connection between the various uh, settlements along the trade way. In particular, anywhere south of Daggerford becomes very dangerous. The lands around Dragonspear Castle have historically been extremely perilous on account of an ancient black dragon who has resided there for time immemorial, not to mention uh, countless hordes of of monsters and devils that we in Waterdeep have had to had to had to put down insurrections there not once but twice, teaming up with our rivals in Baldur's Gate. Show you just how dedicated we have been in time to clearing out Dragonspear. Well, I'm not talking about Dragonspear. I'm talking about Borskia Bridge, a little bit further to the south. In the Boreskia Bridge, that famous bridge where Siric slew Baal and became a god by his own hand, in that famous cursed bridge, we, we have been attempting to uh, fend off attacks by humanoids there, lizard men led by a dragon, a black dragon. If we cannot keep Boreskia Bridge safe, and under control, if we cannot maintain proper mercantile trade, the Lord's Alliance will fail. The North will fail. Waterdeep itself is utterly reliant on imports, on exports, and the trade way is the single most important road in our world. If you could monitor the, re the rebuilding of Boreskia Bridge because of these attacks, then, then you would give civilization a chance. Indeed, you would be crucial to the rebuilding of the, of, of the North, so instrumental that we would be willing to offer you no less than a hundred acres of land anywhere along that stretch of road between Boreskia Bridge and Dragonspear Castle, or north even. And he points it out on a, on a pocket map that he pulls out. Perhaps right here. This was once valuable territory, but of course, since the spell plague, such claims have become more difficult to hold. Somewhere within that region, perhaps. A hundred acres of land. For you to split. Among your associates, among your, among those who agree to the contract. This is quite an enticing offer. Um, I do have a, a few questions, though, before we accept, of course. So this dragon, how much is, is known about it? Is it larger than the one we've got here? Yes. I do believe by the accounts it is larger. It is a black dragon, aquatic. They spit acid rather than fire. They are cowardly rather than brazen. But 
Every dragon is unique, and such stereotypes can often elude us, uh, provide us with illusions that, that, that we then are fooled by. It is a large dragon, uh, it's considerably, considerably larger than the one that you have seen. But, as mentioned, the black dragons have a reputation as being lesser creatures than the reds. You mentioned that the reward was land, but what about the castle itself? Well, hold on, Aldrich, that was what I was getting to next. Uh, Dragon Spear Castle, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's, uh, I'm not sure ruins the right word, but infested with all kinds of dangers. Not oh, I believe ruin is a correct term. It may be the quintessential ruin. People in your line of work call them dungeons, though that is a strictly incorrect assessment. Dragonspear Castle is a historic keep that protected the tradeway, very important. However, it fell to evil more than a hundred years ago. Historical records will indicate that a portal to the Nine Hells was opened at its base, and with this portal open, the vast numbers of monsters were from, from beyond this world, poured into our world and poured out across the tradeway, disrupting all of civilization. Fortunately, in his wisdom, Lord Paragon organized an army along with the masters of Baldur's Gate and together. Together our forces marched on Dragonspear Castle and destroyed it. And yet, the threat remained. It was only a generation later when they returned to destroy it again. And now, we have not been able to maintain our control over, the, over Dragonspear, over the tradeway. In the century of, of chaos, that was the spell plague. Today we know not what lies there, though we are confident that it remains home to a terrible and ancient worm, likely the very one who has inhabited it for so long. For while we defeated the armies, we hardly slew every last creature within the region. The High Moors are notorious for their trolls. The troll bark forest, the troll claws, they have their name for a reason. This is a dangerous part of the world, and yet an absolutely critical one. If we wish to consider ourselves, and I, I am a Cormirian, but I am speaking for the people of Waterdeep. If we wish to consider ourselves here in the north as civilized people, but we cannot even keep our most important highway open, then we deserve the mockery that the Amnians show us. It certainly, and that does lead now into Aldrich's point. Um, this may be seen as overly ambitious, but I mean, we're adventurers, what can we say? If we do this, this quest and receive land in the area, eventually we are going to set our sights on that castle. If, by chance, we were able to clear it out, would the Lord's Alliance recognize our claim on it as our own? I am not a person of great import. I am merely an agent. Uh, ob clearly, this is... Obviously, it's not an immediate question, but it is something... Like I said, we don't plan to leave the city for at least a ten-day if you could possibly get an answer to that question? I can do you one better. I can arrange for you to ask Lady Silverhand yourself. Yeah, that's just as good. Great. Haven't seen her in a, in a spell. Get it? But spell? Wizard? No, okay, never mind. Just glances as everyone <laughs> rolls his eyes. I hear a little chuckle from Sanch. What, what, what do we want with a swamp anyway? Well, it's not all swamp, I believe. It's, it's not necessarily swamp. that. 
Zavrum, it's that it's land on the tradeway. Mm. Some potential to make a lot of money off of it. Well, if we're going into swampy country, I'm going to have to buy some new clothes. I'm not going into a swamp wearing this. Yes, Zevram, you can buy some new clothes. That's absolutely fine. All right, uh, everyone heard it. I have permission to take out of the kitty to buy new clothes. No, you do not. (laughs) You can buy new clothes with your own money. Uh, you have to love his persistence and the trial that he goes through to to try and get it done. I admire that about you, Zevram. I really do. You'd think he'd have given up when I watered the chest. I'll get that money one day. So it's also a matter of putting someone in charge while we're gone of the manor. But that shouldn't be too difficult. Zay's been running the bar Leaf? easily enough. Leaf can look after the bar. Can't he? I mean, he's got nowhere else to be. Well, I would rather leave it in Z's hands than the ghosts, but... Oh, sure, yes, both of them can. I, I just thought that, you know, Leaf being, uh, well, the senior would take Seniority. I suppose Leaf's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, uh, guys, I wouldn't mind staying. I want to do some stuff. Or look into opening my own shop, even. Oh. Uh, well, actually, I believe there's a uh, greenhouse that'll likely be for sale in the near future. <laughs> uh, I, I was right. really kind of thinking about that. <laughs> Still unhappy about that, you know. Oh yes, we'll be having words about that when we're back at the manor. Don't you worry, Zevra. All right, so you've made it back, and um, the two uh, wagons pull up. Uh, the dragon is dislodged, and um, yeah, what's next? Uh, All right. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, let's get the dragon. um, Just, well, cut up and start dismantling it. Is there there anything that I can do in the meantime uh, that might help us out here? I'm not really interested in getting my uh, hands dirty. Get, uh, hand, you think I'm getting... No, 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 no. Lucius is going to snap his fingers four times and just continually cast Unseen Servant. One, two, three, four. <laughs> How many spell slots do you have left? I thought you got into a massive fight. Or I thought we I, were in a massive fight. Oh, well, I mean, we'll dismantle it tomorrow, but I do have low-level spell slots. I don't use them in fights very often. Mm. When we get to the manor, uh, Aldrich just, just just strips off his armor and like his boots, like he just got back from a hard day's work, and just gets straight naked. And um, he goes straight to his room, and you hear just sounds of broken glass and uh, screams of like ecstasy <laughs> coming from his room as whipping sounds. <laughs> Top tally. Tally turns up, um, on, on, not on the downstairs door, but starts knocking on the upstairs door. Knock, 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 knock. knock. Does anyone answer? I'll let Tally in, and then I'll go downstairs. <laughs> All right. Oh, which is... I'll just make my way up to Mr. Aldrich's room, if that's okay. Yes, you do that, Tally. I'll be downstairs. I think I'll sleep in the tavern tonight. I think uh, I'm going to go halfway across town. <laughs> your meditations are interrupted by uh, someone knocking at your door, Aldrich. What? I, I, I've come to be punished, sir. Very well. Come on in. He comes in. I'm very ashamed, sir. Strip your clothes. Of course, of course, sir. I deserve this, and uh, we'll leave it at that. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Pick up the sponge with your butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> you are fortunately across town. 
stage? Oh, uh, expedition to treat, like everything. <laughs> um, I, uh, just, pew, see you later. You are gone. I'm going to put a tiny hut up in the tavern to block all this noises out. <laughs> Indeed. All right. And so, um, what's, what's, what are we doing? We've, um, here we are. We've, uh, we've got the treasures that we've brought up from, um, from our assassination. Do we do anything with them? So I, I think what the plan was, was to take a number of downtime days to sort of, um, get the crafting done and all of that mm. and then we would mm. uh i don't know if you want uh, like how you want to do that but we yeah. would then fast forward to then going back into under mountain to go to um aldrich's temple yeah well basically i was thinking so the plan is to leave water deep in a 10 day or so um so the actual crafting of gear is nothing that needs to be done anytime too soon what we need to get done before the gentle repose runs out is to actually dismantle the dragon. So like the scales, the skin, the meat, the wings, separate it all up, like preserve the meat. Cause I mean the scales and stuff, once they've been removed from like the blood and the meat and everything, they should be fine to last for a while. So basically the idea I was thinking was to take two or three days to dismantle the dragon and preserve the bits that need to be preserved. Um, like the, the put the blood in vials and all that kind of stuff. And then once we've done all that, go down into Undermountain to Temple of Pain on the first level. And then once we come up, we then can either spend a few more days crafting or just leave the city on this mission. Yeah, we have spells to copy over as well. Yeah. A couple of tomes. That sounds good, though. I'm, I'm happy doing that. I can help you out with the uh, Unseen Servants as well. We can get like 30 of them working or more. Yeah. Yeah. Lucius and Sanja are like, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll dismantle the dragon. And then they're just sitting back studying their books while they've got like 10 up to yeah. servants each. So there's just knives floating around by themselves, carving into the dragon. I'm just going to copy paste the information you gave us for the dragon. Great idea. Put it in Discord, not Roll20. Yeah, of course. Uh, um, there is one thing that I want to revisit upstairs in um, in the torture pleasure chamber. Um, Aldrich, one of the things that um, Tally speaks to you about during this confession or during this ritual is um, about how he has uh, been uh, been very loyal to Leviathan. He's been very pious recently. He's been going to church, essentially. Um, he's been going to church because um, a girl called Ruby has shown him the secret entrance into, um, into the House of Pain. So he basically knows now how to get to the House of Pain without going through Undermountain, and he does it relatively regularly. Awesome. Well, be sure to show me this entrance. He does, no. and um, or he gives you the address at least. And it's a there's a a, a leather working um shop up in the north ward. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. So he gives you the name of this of this leather working shop in and not in the north ward, in the in the sea ward. I mean, in the posh part of town. <coughs> yeah. So there you are. So this um this this leatherworking shop that's kind of sits on the edge between the the sea ward and the north ward, uh, at the back there is a um a ladder more or less a, a staircase, and this ancient staircase that was apparently carved like a century ago or more. Tally Tally spends like twelve minutes talking about how oh the the staircase carved a hundred and twenty years ago blah 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 granite blah 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 stone tools blah 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 yeah anyway. Um, so out the back of this leatherworking shop, there is an old staircase, 130 odd years old, that leads down to the temple. They had the House of Pain, and he doesn't know the history of that temple, but apparently the staircase was built at the same time as the temple was. Whatever. Thank you very much, Tally. And then I roll up a newspaper and shove it in his mouth and make him deep throat it. 
<laughs> okay. Are we playing D and D? This this is Aldrich. Uh, We're yeah. playing Aldrich's game. <laughs> that is the last time I am ever. I'm not, you're not getting any more. You you, you don't get any more. All right, that's the end. Okay, <laughs> moving on. How big was the newspaper? Jeez. <laughs> this is... Logistics behind that sound really complicated. Uh, um, Arctic, I forgot to write one of the spell books down. Can you grab this spell book that the drow gave us? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I can remember what spells I had that I didn't have, because there was only two, which was Avad's Black Tentacles and Clad Kill. But um, can you grab that again so Sanch can see what was in it as well? Razeril? I think that was it. I don't know, I'm surprised it's not here. Might well, be um, I'll need to purchase uh, more paper and ink as well to copy uh, my stuff over. No worries, I think it's like the, the writer's kits are like 10 or 15 gold. Oh, no, no, the, the special paper. That yeah, like the, stuff by. to put those spells into my book. Yeah, it's, it's 50 gold per Is it spell right? level. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're just talking about that stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't even see where Rise of Rock is. Where I put him? I'll find him. It's going to take a while, though. Yeah, well, the main, the main ones were Avad's Black Tentacles and Clad Kel, because I have all the other spells, so you can just copy them off me. The Sure. Probably need to happen like once we sell uh, whatever we want to sell once we've harvested it from the corpse of the dragon. So I am poor. Oh, I'd rather dish out a little bit of the gold from the horde to everyone as a reward for the dragon than actually sell the dragon. Okay. Make sure. So you int intend Let's to. make a dragon flesh golem. <laughs> I, I, I like your uh, your enthusiasm. That sounds interesting. I mean, the the shield would be really good because that seems like something that would be very useful for me. But oh yeah, the yeah. consensus is to sell it. We can sell it. No, no, no. We're not selling it. We're not selling oh, it. Okay. <laughs> my right. my point was that we've got we've got so much gold left from Dragon Heist. I'd rather just crack some of that out and give everyone right. a little bit as a reward rather than selling it. Sure. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, like, okay. I mean more like the, um, so for example, like the flesh of the dragon, right? Like, I can't imagine we'll be using the flesh to make a shield or cloaks or anything like that. We've, we've got a tavern. Yeah, yeah I, but I mean, that means we'll be selling it eventually, right? If we're going to be cooking it up. No, I mean, we've got a kitchen. We'll cook it and eat it ourselves. Okay, sure. It's a very efficient it, use of an entire dragon. It's, I like it. All right. It, it, how good is your cook? I mean, a I steak come. that fine needs to be cooked well, don't you think? I will save one of my portents every day for the rest to cook <laughs> the steaks properly. <laughs> Lucius is like standing now over a frying pan with the fucking spatula or something in one hand and a crystal ball in the other. The crystal ball, ding, ding, ding. Oh, it's time to flick this. <laughs> now we're yeah, cooking with you. magic. <laughs> yeah. This is got the, the, cookie, the cooking channel being received directly from Callum Shan via divination magic. <laughs> I get all 24 channels on this bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what the hell is AFL? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yeah, we can um we can pass all of that time those uh those 10 days. Um Yeah, and um there's one more thing we need to discuss. What are we doing with the dragon egg? What can we do with it right now? 
Well, it's worth a thousand gold. You can sell it, right? No, no, we're not selling it. Well, what do you want to do? You Why can't would fucking you rear it. Yeah, I yeah. want to rear it. It's my mount and fly around on a red dragon. Yeah, that sounds like it'll turn out well for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, how long is he going to live? Hundred years, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it'll take at okay. least two hundred years for him to be a threat to any of us. <laughs> Uh, you do with it what you will, then. Awesome. I, um... I want to start looking through the library for books on how to incubate a dragon egg. First, well, the first thing is to not keep it in water deep, because it will not hatch. Ah, sweet. We can, like, put a pause button on it, then. That's, and then not, once ex we've... that's not exactly a pause button. That's, you know... Oh, that's It'll like get a still birth button. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's basically right. It's a, it's a, it'll eventually petrify it. Eventually. How, how, how long? Well, I mean, everyone, if you've watched Game of Thrones, you'll know that petrified dragon eggs can always still be used later on. It's, it's not a slow pro. It's not a quick process. It, it, it you know, like so. Theoretically, okay, uh, so... there are records that, they, that eggs have remained um, in water deep for, say, a year, and have still been fertile. Okay, so we can we can keep it for a bit, and then once we've got yeah. territory out of the city, we can move it there. Theoretically, yeah, theoretically. It sounds awesome. like you intend to yeah raise this thing in that uh, castle you were talking in about. In Dragonspear Castle, we shall raise our own red dragon. There must always be a dragon in Dragonspear Castle. <laughs> you, have to sit on, you have to sit on it for three years, though. <laughs> You do. You do. Does that mean I can start calling you Mother Hen? <laughs> I mean, personally, I wouldn't mind if Lucius walks into a fire to hatch it. Mm. He wanted to walk into a fire? It's not Dragon Ken. No, but you can be the Queen of Dragons. Well, King of Dragons. <laughs> if he dresses up, he can be the Queen of Dragons. What are you talking about? Yeah, we won't judge. You should start thinking of names as well. Does that mean that queens? if I cast Disguise Self into a blonde bimbo that I'll have advantage on charisma checks with the dragon? <laughs> Some dragons. <laughs> Alright, so uh, are we crafting anything in this mm -hmm. 10 Ah, uh, well, how long will it take to craft anything specific? Depends what it is. The shield? Yeah, pretty. Yeah, you can, you can um, AV and Embrick will, you know, will give you a hand. Um, actually, actually, I can probably do it immediately because I can fabricate one a day and I've got Smith Tools proficiency, so I'm capable of making shields. Shields, yeah, de you could definitely apply a character and make one shield in a day. It might not be realistic, but it's D &D. No, no, the, the fabricate spell. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Raw, use raw materials and then it takes 10 minutes and you magically create whatever you've... Um, you want to create? Yeah. So the short answer is you could you could easily make one of them. Ah, uh, yeah. So what was the cost on making a shield for Zevrum? I think it was five hundred. Yeah, five hundred to manufacture. Ah! Uh, does anyone object taking that out of the kitty for Zevrum because it he kind of front lines for us? No, that's fine. Oh, you wouldn't buy someone clothes, but... <laughs> I I don't care if he fights ass naked as long as he's got his shit. <laughs> I, I look at my new friend and go, are you sure we want to join this group? <laughs> <laughs> These guys suck. I, I All right. Dragon. I will mark 500 gold off of the treasure and Zevrum gets his plus one shield of fire resistance. Yeah, we, we don't know they killed this dragon. They might have just found it. <laughs> like the, the scavengers, they're like the hyenas of Wonder Man. <laughs> yeah, you know, they may claim they killed it. I mean, aren't all adventurers just hyenas at heart? Yeah. Yeah. I take that as an insult, thank you. I mean, they even kill each other like hyenas sometimes. Hyenas are dogs, I am not a dog. <laughs> But what are you? I don't actually ever recall seeing something like, well, you, before. Oh, no, Sanj, he's clearly an awakened cat. 
some druid was probably pitying his pet and was like, oh, you know, I'll no, wake him up I've got someone to talk to. There it, must be something more to that. Obviously, you need some kind of vision because I'm not a he. He's obvious. They are obviously a tabaxi. I, I know them. Uh, Mauser, my contact in the Yawning Portal, he's, he's one of them. Well, yes, but I mean, how did Tabaxi come to be? Clearly, they're awakened cats. Warming up my spells that. again. <laughs> there's, there's this thing called evolution. You should look it up sometime, Lucius. I've never heard of cats evolving into speaking creatures without the assistance of magic. I've heard stories of men loving beasts, you know, if anything could happen. <laughs> You're upstairs. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lucius, if I might uh, inquire about the the amount of gold you were willing to give us, um, I just want to get it out of the way and sorted. I uh, don't mean to press the issue, of course, but it uh, is I'm I'm thinking we'll we'll probably use maybe. Oh, well, Sanj and Zevram, what are you thinking? We'll use the um, kitty to buy the corpse of ourselves, because we can use this for many things. Mm. And in the future, there's components there that are going to be very helpful for us as well. Mm. Well, you know me, I'm not that great with money. <sighs> uh, nor am I, apparently. So yeah, where I am. Um... Ahead, maybe? Yeah, uh, it's, it works. All right, I'll mark that off in the books that we bought the dragon corpse using the money for 2,000 ahead, and we will dismantle that and store the part. Um, Ash, since you're staying here, for the time being, can you use your magic to preserve the meat? Uh, sure, I can do that. Uh, do I need to do it every day or like every other day? Uh, your spell lasts for what? Seven days? Ten days? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's no problem then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as you renew it once a week, it should be fine. Yeah, I'll try to remember. Um, Adraste. Hmm? Um, how are you finding it up here on the surface? My eyes hurt. Light <laughs> stings my eyes. <laughs> I know that this is real life too. Like I could just see you sitting there tired, going, "Oh man, oh, <laughs> my screen too bright." <laughs> uh, well, I can't help you with that, but um, how do you feel about walking around up here? I, I, I know that not many people like us, Drow. Um, <laughs> sister. Yeah, she just kind of grits her teeth, but she's not in the right kind of state of mind to just uh, get all up on his face about it. So she doesn't say anything. I, I, I have something here that might help you acclimatize. You know, uh, you can explore without fear of you know being instantly murdered by the populace. <laughs> mm, what would that be? Uh. This it's a it's a little circlet. Uh, you just put it on your head, and um, well, you'll you'll see. Just put it on. I'm gonna take the circlet and just look at Zevram back at the circlet <laughs> and give it back to him. It, it's it's all right. You think, I'm, you think I just put that on without knowing what it does? Uh, it's perfectly uh, safe. It is safe. I don't know you guys that well. It will not harm you. It, in fact, it will. It will. Um, it'll make you look quite beautiful, actually. Um, not, not that you don't look beautiful already. You, you are very voluptuous and curvy. And um, Zevram, can someone please stop me from talking? Z Zevram, just yep. Just get on. Get on with explaining what it does. Well, it, it, it makes you look like uh, a human. Let's see. That's uh, nice. I'll consider it. I'm going to take it, but I'm not going to put it on. Right. Uh, in your own time. Um, worth a bit. 
Don't sell it though. <laughs> you guys really care about money. Why is that? No, they don't care about money. They won't sell anything. We we, we don't not care about money. Um, <laughs> what does money even do though? It makes the world go round, my friend. <laughs> well, let me put it like this. You see this building we're in right now? Uh -huh. Lovely building. Four stories, got a tavern, got a basement, alcohol, yeah. food, all we could want. Yeah, if we didn't have money, we wouldn't be standing in this tavern right now. Right? Yeah, but if, if but you that, didn't that's... have this building, you wouldn't have to work so hard for all this money. See, the building you... has nothing to do with us working hard for money. You got you got to keep up the building and, and all the. It, it seems like an awful lot of work just to keep up a silly piece of. Work. The tavern this pays place for makes, itself. Yes, it generates income. <laughs> yes, that's what I don't understand about the civilized folk. It's money. This, hey, I'm money I'm right that. there. I'm all right you there need with is you. A spear and and some the open air to feed yourself. What We're not. Yeah. We're not, yeah, the monks wouldn't approve either. The Dragon Corpse has nothing to do with money. We're, I'm, I use the, well, our adventuring company's treasury to purchase that simply because it's beneficial for mine and Sanja's experiment. Okay. What is the, your experiment? What's, what do you mean? Weather's lovely today, isn't it? <laughs> Yes, I agree, Lucian. I don't mind those two. They're always, you know, concocting up weird things and doing mm. wizardy things. You know how they are. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh. Yeah, I do. What's wrong with wizardy things? Uh, no, nothing. Um, wizards <laughs> are very nice people that uh, are not socially awkward at all. You are uh, one to practice magic, are you? What did you say your name was, sorry? Uh, I briefly heard uh, someone mention it. It was Kaisia, or Kaisi, and you are? Pointing at the, um, the Tabaxi. Ariak. Ariak. I'm Kaisi. Kaisi. Kaisi and Ariak. And Ariak. Then you... I point myself, Ariak. Yes. Kaisi. Kaisi. Yes, of course. Understood. And that's Bjorn. He's yeah. my best friend. Uh, hello. Uh, B Bjorn? Well, he's a, um... It's an impressive-looking bear. Um, Did you... Sorry, Ariok, you mentioned you were practiced, at least, with some magic. Is that right? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Though so you are a... Monk. Is that right? Well, you mentioned yeah. monks and a monastery? From the monastery, yes. Then we practice battle magic. Mm, fascinating. Very interesting. Okay. Good to know. Oh, you know, baby steps. Oh, okay. I thought I disconnected. No one was talking. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the next morning, we'll craft the shield, remove the egg, and then um, me and Sandra will just use all our unseen servants to to carve up the, um, the dragon, and we'll get Ash to preserve the meat. Um... Where are we going to store, like, the, the bones and stuff, Sanch? I'm thinking we trap the shit out of one of the rooms downstairs and turn it into a full-on laboratory. You know, Lucius, you had my curiosity, but now, uh, my friend, you have my attention. I like where your head's at. Um, a lab downstairs would be... Uh, yes, uh, conducive, I think, to um, making strides later yeah, on. So yes, let's do that. Um, one of the rooms in the complex downstairs, Arctic, we're going to spend a few days going down there and fucking warding the shit out of it. What and do you I'll, mean by um, warding the shit out of it? Alarms, and I'll be using Fabricate to like put a proper iron door 
on um, one of the things. I'll cast an arcane lock, therefore, on that. Basically securing it, because it's underground, there's bricks and everything, it'll be much iron... harder for someone. So iron door, arcane lock, what else? Mm, uh, alarm's not Because that, that's, that's not that powerful, hey? <laughs> Honestly. Do, you have... do we have, do we have do access to something? Yeah, something like magic mouth, of... maybe, or... um. Glyph of warding? Yeah. Put some fireballs down there. Uh, uh, I've considered that, but... I don't want fireballs in our laboratory. Well, it'd be nah. outside next to the iron door. No. Actually, that's not a bad point. Hang on, how much does Glyph Award cost? Uh, Glyph Awarding cost per cast, though? 200 gold. You could gold. get the Magisters to do it, but that, then that would mean showing them what's underneath the tap. <laughs> uh, we can do it ourselves. But... Oh, to, yeah, I'll pay, I'll pay to put a couple of glyphs in. Uh, so, basically, I'm, rather than getting contractors to do it ourselves, uh, um, Arctic, since I can use Fabricate once a day now, um, and the Smith's tools and everything, I can make you know, like an iron bolted door ourselves on one of the rooms that has only one entrance, so I'll just take a heap of iron and gets down there one by one. Um, so the, I'll need to buy raw materials for a door. Sure, I think the player's handbook has the price of iron. You'll find it's quite quite cheap. I don't think they're very good at economics, the creators of 5th edition. <laughs> they're not. I, I think they're like showing that there's a low economy for peasants, but adventurers are far beyond that. Yeah, I don't know. I just think that they don't fucking have any idea how economics works. So. Can I spend 200 gold for an elephant? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Wait until we leave the city. <laughs> they have them for sale down in the Southern Ward right now. They're going for 199 gold pieces right now. There's a discount. Damn. The circus is selling them. <laughs> <laughs> but But they didn't come on the ships because that would mean that no. Cersei it, should have her elephants. That's right. I didn't, didn't, uh, the Romans had elephants on ships, but we can't have elephants. Uh, they, they swam across the, the, what do you call it, to the, forget it. Yeah. Elephants? They're pretty yeah. good swimmers. They swam, swam to sp They swam? No, I'm giving you shit. Of course they didn't. <laughs> can we, can we, like, 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 did they have sails on the back? Did like, did they have oarsmen? I reckon like, like an elephant with oarsmen, like cobalt oarsmen. Fuck yes. <laughs> I like it. Uh, so that in the random encounter for ghosts of salt marsh. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, one pound of iron is only one silver, arc, but I want something a bit more sturdy. Steel? Yeah. Oh, well, how how much would mithril be for a door? Do they, I think they're the price for mithril somewhere. Um, it might be in the DM. No, it might, probably not in the DMG. Price of mithril is somewhere. Um, it, might, it, might, it, might, it might be on that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know where you'll find it. Um, yeah, but but that might amount of mithril probably just isn't available anyway. Like um, a door's worth of mithril is as cheap as whatever whatever price it is. It's probably just not available because there are no, there's not a lot of mithril mines out there. Uh, adamantine. If you can, again, if you can find the price for them, then then go ahead. But I'm not sure what the prices are. Uh, uh, for now, I'll just look for steel and then I'll. See if I can find the price. So, how much per pound of steel, and how many just, pounds would you say in a door? Just, just double the. Yeah, yeah. If, if there's no price for steel, and uh, they just use double, they'll double the price of iron. And as for the weight of a door, five hundred pounds. If it's like six foot by three feet. All right, so that'd be a thousand silver. So it's a hundred gold. That's not much at all. Yeah, exactly. It's not much at all, anyway. It's half an elephant. It is half an elephant, to be fair. It's, it is half an elephant. Alright, so yeah, I am going to put that on there, and then 
Uh, yeah, I still have some materials for arcane lock, so I'm going to put arcane lock on the door. Um, and it, this is only going to have me and Sanj being able to enter. Um, and then I will also fork out 400 gold for two glyphs of warding, one with fireball on the outside of the door, um, and then... Um, yeah, one with fireball on the outside of the door, and then one with hold person on the inside of the door. All right. And are you putting him in Laura Mundi's room? Is this is that the room that you're using? Like that's that's oh, the most. Right. There's the secret door. There's a secret yeah. room there. Yeah. And you can you can put the iron door on the shadow thief wall, and then you know you've still got the secret door for Laura Mundi's lair. Like that's you know that would be. That's yeah, my suggestion. yeah. I, I am or the steel door on the first doorway, and then there's the secret door, and I'll put arcane. I'll fork out the extra twenty five to do it on the secret door as well as the iron, the steel door. Um, while we're while we're back up on the surface as well, I meant to suggest: do we want to maybe look at getting um, Liam in secret chest? That'd be pretty good. Yeah, can either of you cast it? We have the spell slots to cast it, but I don't know the spell. I'm right. just saying, one of us could pick up the scroll, but we would need to get the... Oh. the You'd have to find someone that's selling it. Yeah, that's the... Yeah. I was say, like, a legal spell, and so... Oh, by I the see. way, okay. um, I mean, yeah. we did just let... It might be too late for you to change anything now, but I just did notice that you... um. You said you took Lightning Bolt as one of your level-up spells, right? Yeah, I, di I had done so, but prior to starting um, today, I had noticed that we'd picked that lightning bolt was in one of the tomes that we picked up in on yeah. the mountain. So have you, have you already changed that to a different spell? That's right, yes. Okay, never mind then. We will just grab that spell at level 9. <laughs> the Zentarum yes. will sell it to you. Which one, the Manchunians? They're the only ones left, brother. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> hey, we never collected the gold from killing the Zentarum either. For the Doom Raiders. <laughs> well, we collected what was on their corpse, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. Zevram, yeah. Zevram can walk down to Manchurian's base and like, hey, 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 we killed all the Doom Raiders. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that. Don't want to talk to that guy anytime soon. For a bit of context, Mark, there's a um, uh, there's an archmage living in the in the city, a, a villainous archmage. And um, he's our enemy, but we keep doing jobs for him anyway. <laughs> yeah, we've done one inadvertently. Job for him. Inadvertently. How one... was that inadvertent? That makes perfect sense, I guess. Well, we've done it... we've done one job for him, and we didn't even technically do the job. We decided to do something else. Yeah. It's a it's a my enemy's enemy is my enemy kind of situation. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, so just for a bit of context. That's Manchun. Well, um, oh, shh! You've got powdered diamonds. Oh, yeah, yeah, 500 gold pieces of it, yeah. Where from? From oh, one of the corpses. Mm, uh, cleric, one of the Doom exactly. Raiders. Yeah. Shit, yeah, oh, if yeah. I can... If I can get that off you... I mean, I'm still going to ward it so only me and Sanj can enter the secret, secret laboratory, but I'll definitely be less hostile <laughs> towards the Dark Elf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't it make sense to give me it to uh, Eldritch? Or Revivify? No, you need full diamonds for Revivify. Powdered diamonds is for Glyph of Warding. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, no, if I can get 400 gold of that off you, that'll cover the Fireball and the whole... Yeah, if, if Lucius asks for it, Adrastia would just kind of hand it over without saying anything. Like She's kind of staring off into space at the moment. She's not really like she used to be, like you, you know, the, the initial drow that you met. All right. Zevra, I'm sorry, but you've been bumped down to my second favorite drow. <laughs> <laughs> what, 500 not... gold? That's all it took? <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, that was very, very kind of you, Adrastia. Yeah, don't mention it. Yeah, so, um, Arctic, since we've now got two doors down there, the fireball is going to be behind 
the steel door and then the whole person will be behind the secret door. So even if the fireball goes off, the actual laboratory won't be damaged. Okay. I'll forget yeah. that, but as long as you remember it. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll remember that. And then there's the arcane locks on the doors for um, plus five, I think it is, to the DC to pick the lock or break them. Cool. Right. Did you take, uh, done... take all 500 gold pieces? Uh, just, 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 400? Four, just 400. I don't need the other 100, so you can keep that to sell it yourself. <laughs> I you would want. see you guys separating right. 500 of powder. Like, I yeah. just need this much powder. You can have the rest of the powder. Yeah, exactly 100 gold pieces worth of powder. Just split it exactly. Hmm. So I uh, had this job in high school. My grandpa hmm. was a jeweler. And I actually sorted the tiny melee for him. Just the smallest of diamond. That's oh, cool ass. Nice. Like, tell us about that. Yeah. Do you like use like little tweezers or what? little tweezers and a tiny little caliper? It was the most <laughs> tedious thing I've ever done. Yeah. Did, did you have to put the you know the jeweler's spyglass in as well while you you were doing the, the it? Loop? No, yeah. I didn't use a loop. Oh. You got so, good eyes I though, to... I suppose. Being young. I like telling people that I literally sorted grains of sand for and has a job. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Arctic, um, one of the, one of the things I personally fucking hate about Fifth Edition is that they didn't bring permanency forward from three point five. Um, is there so? And you know how a lot of spells, if you cast them every day for a year, um, they they become permanent. That's it's cool. Five E way of doing permanency. Is, is, is there, there any? Know that, but... Is there any way to to like extradite that at extra cost? Permanency spell. Um, seriously though. Um, what if you had three hundred sixty-five wizards all casted at the same time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could do it. I could do it. <laughs> that's, but that sort of mathematics is actually not a bad application. So, like, between the pair of you, maybe you halve it down to half a year. If you could get another couple of, you know, ninth-level mages, um, then maybe, yeah, like, ritual casting, maybe? Get apprentices. There you go. Get apprentices and, uh, and get them for rituals. Yeah. Because that's, that's I want to I want to make this spell on the tavern in the lab, but it's a fucking... Uh, once a year power. private yeah. sanctum it prevents divination magic and teleportation into the area pretty cool yeah. let arctic think about it um yeah it, a chance to figure out how that would be possible i don't mind like doing it now like um because we're never gonna because i'm not going to be available at any other time so if you want to I, I, how, how you want yeah i I'm, I'm very mindful that i want everyone to be entertained all the time all the time well, but, um, but at the same time, you know, like you're not, never going to have another chance to discuss this. So, so it's up to it's entirely up to you guys what you what you want to do. It's all so much in your court. Well, yeah. Um, yeah well, well, first of all, wow. Well, well, no, I don't think it's worth waiting too long. I mean, even if yeah, you did right. that theory, and then me and Sanj did two spells a day, it'd still take three months. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, really I mean, want to do that. I meant willing to wait while you, it was explained. Real time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, so yeah, like, is there a way for us to go through the Magisters to at least quote something along the lines of, of making it permanent in a shorter t period of time? 10,000 gold? <laughs> permanent yeah. magic is, like, a serious fucking thing, huh? Yeah, I know. Do you think the Magisters want to put that on your house? Precisely. Precisely. Yeah. Permanency is a long time, hey! Humans live a hundred years. Water deep, it does not. And and what you create now will last and last and last. Yeah, I was, I was, I was hoping that they'd be able to like sell a scroll of permanency so they wouldn't <laughs> know where I... Because it's, it's not like I want to go, Hey there, guild mage, come and check out this secret the, laboratory we're working on. <laughs> the Red Wizards will. Red Wizards will sell you a scroll of permanency for 10,000. Now that's tempting. They'd, they, they don't they don't they don't give up I don't care your business is your business like they believe that water deep is a place for free enterprise that's only that's... one problem the only red wizard who could sell you one is currently in jail 
Oh, God. Oh! <laughs> okay. Of course. Is that? His name is El Soon. And he uh, was believed to be conspiring with the Zentarum or the Xanathar's Guild, or possibly both. And um, you don't know what, I mean, you can pick up a newspaper and, and maybe find mention for him. But yeah, he's um, he's not wanted on any particular charge. In fact, it's the, the article that you currently read is, you know, what sort of message is Waterdeep sending to the world that we would lock up innocent people? What has he done? He's done nothing wrong. What is he? Is it now a crime to associate with criminals? Is you know, do if my brother is a criminal, am I a criminal by default? All El Soon was doing was meeting with known criminals. That doesn't make him a criminal by himself, you know. And but anyway, he's been locked up. So you know what, Arctic? What? It's not. It's not like I'm willing to spend 10k right now or able to. But but Lucius is so. Uh, open-minded that he's willing to write that down in his notebook to check up on at a later point in time. All right, I'll make sure that you also write down about Elsoon being in jail. Yeah, I yeah. wrote down Elsoon, Good. Red Wizard could sell permanency spell, but he's in jail. Ten grand. Put the frost to. Ten yeah, grand enough, will close. extort to lower price if freed. You know, funnily enough, that's close to, like, all the homebrew permanency spells I'm looking up. Is it? Well, they all value it at around, you know, 6 to 10k. Dungeon Master. There you go. But, it, yeah, it's not... It's one of those spells that doesn't translate into 5th edition very well because it had... Uh, it originally had an XP cost to it. Well, not in 2nd edition, I don't think. And so in 3rd edition it did. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what are we doing? All right, I believe Aldrich has to go to the Temple of Pain now. Yeah. Are you oh, Are you asking us to come along, or are you just going there on a pilgrimage, Aldrich? Please don't ask me to go along. Before we do that, we'll um we'll we'll do a conversion. Okay, sure. Tell you again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not quite. A um, uh, Adrastria. Mm-hmm. Okay, so tell us about the past 10 days for you. Well, I'd say that uh, not long after receiving the circlet from Zevram, she considers putting it on, like, <laughs> struggling with her pride, struggling with who she is, and against her, uh, like, hating every second of it, she decides to put it on. And seeing her reflection in the in the mirror, she's transformed into a perfectly attractive uh, young human female which oh, really? angers her to no to no to no avail oh really that's disgusting so she you're, takes you're the you're perverted like, there's something wrong with you <laughs> for a she bit of context it. everyone this 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 magic item when you place it on your head it transforms you into what you believe in your soul to be the most beautiful humanoid you can imagine the, the best the best version of you that you can think you could possibly be. And, and, and so, yeah, describe a little bit more deeply just how you look. Like, uh, un unlike her dark ashen skin, it's very light skin, like very, not quite albino, but very pale just... with, uh, like, with red hair and, like, fiery red hair and freckles and a very innocent looking face as opposed to her, like, stern, chiseled face. And human, not even your 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 ears, your eyes—they're all wrong. You're, you're a human. Yeah, exactly. And she just she's extremely conflicted, feeling so many emotions, like rage and sorrow and confusion. She doesn't know what to think about this. Do you keep the circle on? Well, she, I'd say that she uh, reaches to take it off then decides to leave on just a little bit longer and then go explore the city. All Being right. able to explore in a way that she never could before. People smile at you and they wave. They offer you to try their apples and their pies. They greet. They curtsy. Men look at you. Uh, some of them look at you with respect, but a considerable more a leer a little longer than perhaps their wives would like to. Um, uh, wherever you go, you're treated with a, uh, 
well, dare I say, a kind of privilege that you haven't been exposed to. Mm. And just exploring the different wards, browsing through the marketplace, being able to smell the different smells of fresh pastries being cooked and all the amazing and bizarre wares on offer. All the while, my eyes are still stinging from the stunts from the sunlight. I don't think the circlet would fix that. Does it's not. just a constant. It's a constant reminder that my current appearance is a lie. As you travel through the market um, uh, with uh, fresh fish in in fish tanks on one side and chickens on the other, a kind of livestock market, you see a dark elf being dragged through the street. His um, uh, mouth is gagged. He has uh, iron manacles binding his hands behind his back. And there is no less than six guards uh, dragging, accompanying, uh, um, in uh, pulling of the hair of this, this lone prisoner. And as they drag uh, this, this man, this, this male dark elf, through the street, they force him to keep his eyes open, staring them up at the sun. You'll pay for what you've done. Oh, don't you worry about that. You'll <laughs> take a good look, lad, for you won't be seeing the sun for a long time. Drag him past you towards a watch house. Do you react in any way? Uh, I'd probably follow, at least. I don't know, about 50 yards down uh, down the street, as everyone parts to give these city watchmen the mo the room that they that they need. They pass him over to uh, a watch house, a, a small jail, a small local jail in the market, where he will presumably be later processed by a judge, as is the uh, form of justice here in Morton. I'm going to approach and say, excuse me, um, could, uh, could I ask what this... What this uh, what this dark elf has? What crime they have committed? Ah, uh, he's associating with with uh, known criminals. Known criminals? Aye, mean... associating with like... former members of the Zen of the Zenithars and the Zentarum. Aye, we caught him with a with a group of bugbears that had that had Zenithar tattoos. Uh, Burned into their skin like some kind of uh, hideous devil ritual. I see, and as he I, says that, I, I, I realize that it could have very easily been me if I had chosen not to be wearing my circlet right now. I, he, he, he tries to mumble something, but he can't. The best he can do is make some hand signals, and Drow have a unique hand language. Or he's, while he's wrists are, are bound, he's still able to do the hand movement. So, um, uh, he's, but, um, but rather, and so while you're looking at his hands to try to see if that's what he's doing, make some sort of signal, you can see that he whips out a little pin, a little pin that he, um, like a, a small piece of wire that he bends. And he fumbles and fiddles with it and then puts it in his palm and hides it away. And all the while, the guards are um, dragging him along or talking to you. And you think that you are alone, are the, are the only person who saw him flip this, um, this little lockpick out from, um, from up his sleeve and into his palm. Uh, I let, let out, uh, just a slight smirk at the drow, uh, at his preparedness. And know that uh, if he gets the opportunity, he's definitely going to be able to slip free at some point. But then I start to question: Should I allow this? Like, like who who am I? Like, uh, like looking down at my hands, my white human hands. Like, like who am I? Am I drow? Am I am I human? What do I want to be? And she starts having a bit of an existential crisis as she considers this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. It's a it's a great question, isn't it? You know, you're on one hand, you're you're hoping that this guy gets free because you identify with him racially, and on the other hand, if he is being arrested for some crime, legitimate or not, is it really? Is it? Are you really going for the good guy when you when you want him to escape? And then these are the questions that you're wondering. 
when you wander past a um a small establishment uh uh the sword maiden can any does anyone know much about this temple the sword maiden it's the temple of Illustre, isn't it is that correct um no well, the sword maiden might just be one of those water deep statues actually no. um, i think yeah, the sword it's, maiden is one of it's them. one of the the statues um Illustre doesn't technically have a temple no, yet no. Um, but in recent events, within the books, about a year ago, um, one of the noble women, um, the, the Harper one, uh, Romelia Haventry, I think it is, um, she sponsored a temple of Illustre to be built in the, uh, the the ward that's up the top there. What's that one? Um, Seawood? No, 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 outside the, the troll game. Oh, the field ward. The field ward. Um, she paid for a hill inside the field ward to be temp uh to be cleared with a temp with a big tree erected so basically it's going to be like an area for the illustre worshippers to hang out and that'll be happening round about now okay cool all right we'll, we'll we'll use that and so you find yourself wandering through the field ward um uh, and um things are, are are looking more orderly here than they um than they were um in the previous months not that not that you'd be aware of that um and on the the cleanest part of the field ward is a is a nice green commons with some goats and and uh small cows and little calves grazing at the base of it uh birds jumping around in the grass plecking uh little butterflies and day moths from the air and at the top of this uh, small green rise uh, three women underneath considerable shade and shielding their eyes in addition to the shade that's already provided and um, you can see quite clearly from their glossomer dark skin um, and their uh, their bright lustrous free-flowing hair that they are definitely dark elves all three of them um, they're engaging in fairly light conversation um, or at least two of them are, while a third it seems more preoccupied with uh, the horizon. I'm going to approach and uh, st stand uh, next to them, close enough to hear what they're saying. As, as you get closer, uh, the youngest of the three, um, um, a pretty girl, uh, lightly, lightly dressed, it seems to go for a weapon at her belt, um, a, a blade, but um, uh, one of the elder of the, uh, maybe a hundred years her senior, uh, one of the other females, um, the other drow, she halts her and um, bids her that um, she show some restraint. Oh, I nod and say... Greetings, sisters, and remove the circlet from my head and poof back into my original form. Say, uh, tell me, I've, I've never seen so many drow in one place so comfortably here in Waterdeep. How is it that you're able to stand here and chat without being harassed by, by the humans here? They look at each other. Uh, one of them has long, blonde, platinum blonde hair. Um, and she seems kind of tight-lipped at your question, while the one who grabbed the blade relaxes a little and lets the uh, lets her counsellor, who, uh, who halted her movement, do the talking. And this woman has uh, glowing blue eyes, and although her skin is uh, nominally a kind of purplish black it's fairly fairly light it's kind of an ash color rather than the the deep dark um color tones that many droughts play we owe everything to Lena silverhand she she says to you she has changed all of the law all of the culture here the seven sisters are a true blessing for all of Faerun. And Waterdeep is very lucky to be under such good governance now. And we are very lucky to live in a time 
When people are seeing past such superficial things, looking into each other's hearts and seeing what is really important about I'm just nodding my head and very surprised to hear this because I probably haven't been to the surface in who knows how long. So this is definitely a shock to me. I see. Uh, and they allow Loth worship up here? I ask quizzically. Like The blonde one hisses. Mm. Like, Maybe, maybe they do. I think, I think yes. But we are not lost worshippers. But I think yes. You know, there is more goddesses. There is more gods for the drow than just one. Loth is just like the queen of gods. Like your, uh, hmm, your helm, your torn, king of your gods. Yes. I feel as if I'm at a crossroads in my life, and I don't know what to do. I feel as if I'm not the person I used to be. Do you think Elistray could help me? They look at each other, or the other pair look at the one who is speaking. Of course, the light is there to guide all, but... I do not want to discourage you. We are, we are specialized. Illustre is specialized. She has mostly the interests of our people at heart. You may be better suited to a light god of your own race. He took right? the circlet off, Arctic. Oh, you take the circlet off. Sorry, I didn't realize. And yeah, um, I took it off uh, moments after I approached. You. And um. Uh, because of my mistake, I'll assume that you know you just reveal it now. Okay, it's fine. And um, and and they gasp. Um, but as you're um, as you're revealing it, um, or just prior to when you do, the uh, the blonde one asks you directly uh, while you're still in your human form: Are you not afraid of us? No, I'm afraid of myself. As I take the circle off. Perfect. That's great, and that's that's how the script would be written. And um, the audience is like, "Oh my god, big reveal!" And yeah. so, um, yeah, they 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 are equally astonished. All three of them, sister, come and join us. But uh, the blonde one remains suspicious. Uh, who are you? Me, I go, I go by Adrastia. And it is not enough to tell me what you go by. Who are you? A remnant from another time. A remnant of, uh, what was it, clan, uh, house, uh, house Frath. Yes, that's right. A remnant of House Frath. The two of the old, the two older drow look at each other. Ones who are, who are of age comparable to you. 300, I'd guess. 200, maybe. Well, this one on their left is a, it's a century old. She's still a girl. Really? Hmm. Of Menzo Baranzen? Yes, that's right. I haven't been there for a very long time. They look at each other again. And the one who spoke initially speaks again. <laughs> Here we are. Fossils come out of time. <laughs> Welcome, sister. You should come with us. Will you be free tonight? We are going to pray. Uh, absolutely. I have nothing else better planned. Well, we shall see you here tonight, then. I nod politely and then reach to put the circlet back on my head and then just pause there for a moment and then decide to put it into my pack instead. As I uh, continue to explore, this time a little bit more apprehensive. 
spend the next few hours being harassed. You spend the next few hours with looks of disgust. As soon as, soon as you try to walk through the uh, through the gate, they seek your registration. They go through all of your equipment. They they demand to know where you acquired your weapons and and what you intend to do with them. But the solace finally comes again at night, and under the moonlight that night, you rejoin this sisterhood, this coven, and they tell you about Elystra, and they tell you about the times during the Crown Wars when the Dark Elves became the drow, when they, when Corellan, the chief god of the elves, cursed them as an entire race, and they don't, they don't, they don't cast judgment on whether that was fair or not, whether it's fair to curse an entire race for the actions of a, of, of the majority. Whatever the, the case, they tell you about Elystra, and they tell you how when, when Loth and the Dark Elves were cast down, Elystra offered, she offered to go down with them to, into the deepest, darkest areas, despite being a moon goddess, so that the drow might have a light, a light to guide them back to the surface. And now, tonight, you dance underneath this moonlight, and as the ladies shed, their clothing piece by piece. And as the men of the field ward leer and jeer and raise their beer, and as the women grab their children and cover their eyes and, and take them away, and do you join in this ritual? How much do you bear? Uh, I'd say uh, just a to her to underwear at first. Like she, she wants to fully join. But she's not quite committed yet. Like she's still, you know, it's going to take a little bit more time for her to be fully comfortable. They each take their blade and they raise it and they dance it in honor of the moon maiden. And when the ritual is done, you you feel a a shift in your heart, in your very soul. Indeed, indeed, at a metaphysical level. You shift your alignment. <laughs> and for the first time in a long time, she feels kind of at peace with herself. A little more comfortable with who she is. A little more, feeling a little more purposeful in the world. Your sisters await your return. Now go. And live life and enjoy the world underneath the sky, underneath the stone, wherever the paths may take you. May Elystra's light lead you. Thank you very much, sisters, for this enlightening experience. Mm -hmm. I you know, give a polite drow, a drow a, I'm not sure what you do to what a traditional drow sort of uh, exit gesture would be, whether it be a bow or whatnot. Probably hand bow, signals. Yeah, well, so if yeah, someone some, is some good. Polite, <laughs> some polite hand signals then to, to yeah. politely gesture that I'm leaving. I don't imagine there's a lot of words for love and friendship in the drow language. So they convey all the more meaning when the gestures are given. That's, if, if there is, it's usually accompanied with love to kill, love to stab, <laughs> love to murder, love to betray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like an unfinished sentence when you just say love. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Before I uh, before I leave, uh, I ask them: uh, Is is there uh, perhaps any donations I could make to this community? They would always welcome more silver that they could add it to uh, to the uh, to the fund. I'll give them uh, 50 gold as I leave. Wonderful. A big, a big purse full as a gesture of good faith and to help them support this movement. These are your sisters. Uh, Yolande did the majority of the talking. Bail Recte was the one who was going to stab you. <laughs> Just showing love. And Daimon Diana remains suspicious of your motivation. 
All right. Like Zevram was saying, she just loves to stab people. It's her way of sharing love. I just love that I'm a male in a predominantly female <laughs> religion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're, not only you're male, my in. You're my in, all right? Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not that it's entirely predominantly female. It's just that most people don't care about the naked male dark elves dancing in the moonlight. Right. So Maybe last generation did. I reckon the current generation likes it more. The last. Anyway, what were you saying? Sorry, I have to. I'm just going to say after you know a few days of exploring, like staying at a few different inns, like using the circle where necessary to avoid being harassed too badly. Mm. She then returns to to the manor, and we have butchered a dragon and made some shields and. Stuff. I admire the craftsmanship of this shield that Zevram's holding. Like, my Zevram, this is a certainly an amazing shield. Uh, Where did you get it? Um, well, I I had it made by um one of the servants. Excuse me. <laughs> I changed joking. I changed my mind, Zevram. You can pay for that shield yourself. I was just kidding. Calm down. I, it, Lucius made it for me. Uh, it's pretty neat, right? Look, if I if I angle it right, I can reflect red light in your face. Huh? Just squint as as you do so. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I also just keep doing it until it's like the point of annoying. <laughs> it's also very good at deflecting fire, and I'm going to cast firebolt at it. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> good demonstration, to be honest. <laughs> Ding! See, it works. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> well, at least it's field tested now. <laughs> oh, hold on. Can I cast fireball at it? <laughs> yes, you, maybe. I mean, no, 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 no. <laughs> Technically, yes. Not inside. Not inside. Can I counterspell the fireball so it doesn't like blow up the interior of the tavern? Yes, but not technically. Uh, yes, absolutely, okay. you can. <laughs> I'd love to do that. Very and good. Can I yeah. then fireball the bastard, the dead, <laughs> the tavern? <laughs> Only if we really want to escalate that. <laughs> stop. Stop, everyone. Stop, please. Are you trying to burn my fucking tavern to the ground? Fireball. Ah, oh, fuck. My tavern's burning to the ground. <laughs> I what are you guys you doing? doing? You need to release all worldly possessions. <laughs> That's 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 an interesting perspective on the philosophy. Like, I I really like that actually. A, an arsonist anarchist that that you know gets around trying to liberate people from their worldly material goods, even if they're attached to it. <coughs> oh, what wow. a villain! Look, I'm not going to lie. Lucius is a greedy capitalist nobleman. If you try and liberate him from his goods, he'll liberate you from your life. Well, that's the ultimate liberation, isn't it? Pretty much. That's 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 a bit. <laughs> Look, uh, while I enjoy all this spell flinging, um, it are we calm down a little? But are we going to uh, to this swamp now, or or are we heading well, somewhere else? Well, first of all, Aldrich, do you absolutely need us to come with you going to this temple, or can you make it there by yourself? I mean, I could make it there by myself, but I mean, if you would, I would be delighted if all of you joined me to experience. Wonderful! You can take Zephyr with you now. Experience my culture. Uh -huh. my culture. I am not going alone with Captain Purr. Is, is no one screen. else going to come with us? Look, I would absolutely love to, but I think me and Sanj have some important experiments that need to be done. You know, before the material starts to deteriorate or anything. Oh, wait, where are you guys going? Uh, to what the house of pain, I think. To a temple. Oh, I wouldn't mind going to a temple. Yeah, I'll right. agree to come with Aldrich as well. As long as I'm not alone there with him. Um, excellent. Uh, the, then it's decided. 
you know, I am well, rather curious to see what uh, what happens in the House of Pain. Will there be a fight? Probably. I'm I'd... going. <laughs> you should be warned that um, Leviathans aren't exactly uh, subtle. Yes, that's the word. Subtle. Oh, they're very open and proud about their feelings. Wait, uh, Bjorn could come too, right? If you wish. It... Well, I don't go You know what? Bjorn. This might be an excellent opportunity to see what sort of uh, moral fiber you're all made of. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, uh, a, a test of sorts before we face a dragon. Uh, well, another dragon. Oh, but, but is there going to be a fight there? I, I hope there's no fighting. Oh, God, I hope so. I I would hope that Aldrich could defuse any such events. There shouldn't right. be any fights. I'm I'm a high priest. I'm, I merely owe it to them and to my goddess. A visit. Right, it's, it's a peaceful pilgrimage that may result in some BDSM. What, what what's that? I'll tell you when you're older. Oh, oh, okay. You're probably older than me. <laughs> I am maybe like twenty three, twenty five. Oh, okay. I'm only twenty six. So. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe all of you will convert to the true religion. Yeah. I oh, you mean? The old order? Yes, definitely. Um, sure. Why not? Let's go with that. Um, so, Aldrich, well, how do we get there? Well, thanks to Tally, uh, there is an entrance in a leather shop that we could take that leads directly there, so we don't have to go through the yawning portal and deal with that bastard. A leather shop? Well, that sounds entirely appropriate. <laughs> it's true, it is very fitting. I completely missed that. So, uh, I suppose, are you going with them, Sanj, or will you help me with this lab set up? No, I'd love to say and help. Like, I've been meaning to copy some spells over as well, so perhaps wonderful, I can do that wonderful. now. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. We'll leave them to you... their delights. Just have Tally take care of the uh, the building of the lab and just come with me. Oh, no, no, no. There's all kinds of, you know, spells and wards hey, and things we need to set up. Do you guys have a lab? No, we don't. You know, we'll, <laughs> we'd love to come with you next time, Aldrich. It's just we're really busy right now. Yeah, um, there's a real interesting um, book I've been meaning to catch up on. Oh, but, uh, you guys have books? I love books. Yeah, um, we might. No, we do. We have books. There are some books. They hand you a copy of the Minotaur's Lover. <laughs> that that is a fantastic read, by the way. I swear to God, if you get to your dirty handprints all over my copy of Slattens of Suzelle, <laughs> I will kick you out of this tap. <laughs> It's a very exclusive book, okay? Don't look at me like that. Mm-hmm. All right. Pictures? I, I can't read. I'm sorry. It's got pictures. Oh. I, I would think it's full of pictures, actually. Some that even fold out. Oh. They're that big, yes. Mid-folds? Wow. Zevram, have you been looking through my books again? I have not not been looking through them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we find ourselves at the front of Blackjack's Whips and Leathers. <laughs> <laughs> It is the most exclusive, exquisite, and expensive leather and whip shop in all of Waterdeep, and that's why it's found in the Sea Ward. It's, um, yeah, it's for a particular class of clientele. 
It's also just across the road from Casa Lanter Estate. You know, I don't know what I was expecting, but somehow I'm not disappointed. We're going to take a short um, break, and when we come back, um, <laughs> we will descend even dip deeper into hell than we have already reached in today's episode. <laughs> descend into decadence. Yeah, you thought you thought Aldrich's butt cheeks comment was bad. Wait until you enter his religion's temple. Wait, what butt was... cheek comment? <laughs> <laughs> you missed it. He said, "Pick up the sponge with your butt cheeks." To Sally. <laughs> I was gonna say broken glass, but you know he's not ready for that. <laughs> Gotta ease him into it. How did you come up with this character? <laughs> what do you mean, come up with it? This is just him. Okay. I, I think when we when we first started this campaign, I, I think someone asked him what classes he hadn't played before. Uh-huh. Something like that. I think he ended up coming to the conclusion of, oh, I'm going to play a cleric. And then he's like, oh, okay, what god do I want to be a cleric of? And he, he was looking through them and... <laughs> well, he didn't like any of the holier than thou sticklers, and somehow ended up on the fire talk. Well, it was one of you guys, yeah, that mentioned it, and I was like, oh. And then I read into it. I was like, ooh, I could, I could go into a whole world of perversion with this religion. <laughs> yeah, yes, you can, and it's beautiful. It's something. Yeah. No safe words with Aldrinch. Spit in my mouth and call me a bitch. (laughs) No, it's it's certainly my favorite character that you've done in any of these games. I wonder if I'm ever, like, if I'm just going to end up either staying with this religion or if my guardian angel is going to ever, like, try to get me back to the, I guess, the light in some way. Or El Miter, because originally I was with El Miter. Look, you've seen how mu- how much of a uh, tight-ass kind of stickler Marinus was when he was like religiously following Elmada. Can you see Aldrich ever being like that again? Oh, by the way, uh, after giving Lucius that powdered diamond, you think in exchange during those couple of days he would have been able to spare some time to identify a few items? Oh yeah, I mean, it's a ritual spell. It's easy to do. Ten minutes. Yeah, because there are a couple of rings and a mace and whatnot that I need to identify. Yeah, sure thing. All right, I'll, I'll also... Do the things you want to do before you go down, are there? Oh, it's just something I forgot about, which is... Yeah, no worries. Like, ...items that yeah. I probably would have asked Lucius to identify for me. Yeah, go ahead. Like, absolutely. If there's anything that you haven't caught up on, then by all means, you've got time to do it. Yeah, the first one would be... Uh, this big black mace called uh I don't know I don't know what it's called but uh, I hand it over. You said it was called Nightbringer. Yeah, I'll um, identify them all, but that is a question for you, Arctic. Right, you don't have the stats for all that sort of stuff. No worries. Uh, okay, cool. So I'll bring those guys up. Um, Nightbringer belonged to Istridhorn. I can probably take a guess at what the effects of Nightbringer are. I have a guess. I think it is a mace that is... What's a mace damage die? Like 1d8? 1d6, I think. Yeah. I think it is a mace that does 1d6 damage, and things go dark if you're reduced to zero hit points. <laughs> twice. Sort of I, twice. Think, I think it's uh, on hit blind or something. You got it. Yeah. The plus one more on a critical hit. Um, uh, there's a chance of being blinded. So it's not that useful, but it's pretty good. It's like a Zentarum favorite. 
isn't it? It is his Antarum favorite. Yeah. It's also a holy symbol of Bane. Interesting. That's good to know. It's worth quite a bit by the looks of it. Mm-hmm. And you can sell it immediately if you wish for that. For that, uh, res- is there a resale price? Then there's not. Re- RV is resale value, market value, and resale. Value. Well, before yeah. I, uh, I probably won't sell it just yet. But before we leave, I'll also hold up this uh, platinum key that I also took, and point out the inscription and say V two thirty five. Does that mean anything to anyone? Uh. No. Which one of them did you take that off? I think so, that yeah. was Istrid that I yeah. took it off. But Correct. I... It sounds like a room number to a hotel or inn or some establishment. Istrid, she or, was the. Or maybe V for Vault. You know? Yeah. Vault. I'm not sure, if, not sure if safety deposit boxes exist, but I, that's why I'm assuming that it's a key to some sort of something like that. Well, she, was, she, was, she was their financier, wasn't she? It's possible. She was. I think she certainly had a lot of money on her, and I mm. feel a little guilt. A little you would know. Guilt come over. You would definitely know, um, uh, Sanj, without a doubt. She was the uh, the banker for that side of the Zentarum. Um, uh, although, although she was a priestess, she was also a rather prominent banker. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Do you know what bank she went to? He uh, would, yeah. He sure. would, um... Would they, they yeah, be they, 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 bank, or...? Yes, that's right. They tend to have their own, like, reserves. Of course they have their own reserves. But the Castellanta Bank was the bank... Was, was the legal bank they associated with. Basically, they did their laundering through the castle. Maybe Zevram can disguise himself as her and then go in... Because he's like an actor and shit. Well, With hold on. Teeth. Isn't. Is Istrid a human? A dwarf. dwarf. A dark dwarf. A, dwarf. a sun dwarf. Okay. Uh, I could certainly try, but I might be a bit taller than expected. You can cast Disguise Self, can't you? Well, yes, of course, but um, I can't change my height. You can't change your cat size category, but dwarves count as medium. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can become a foot shorter. <laughs> I know you're having like an out of character conversation here, but yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know how to say that in character, but that's how the spell works. <laughs> I, I, I think it's great that you don't look at size, Lucius. Oh, I definitely judge on size. Well. well. Um, good to know. He just likes smaller, better than bigger. <laughs> and no, I clearly think Zevram's less of a man than the rest of us, but I mean, hey, why are we having this conversation? <laughs> you brought it up. <laughs> All right, well, I could possibly look at this once I'm back. You're aware of the penalties for impersonating people, right? Yeah, I, I know the... Yeah, which is why I'm suggesting Zevram does it, not me. Right. <laughs> I know the code legal like the back of my hand. <laughs> I, I, I knew that you did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, how do you break the rules if you don't know what the rules are, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, more, more to the point is I think I've actually got the key to Phyla's greenhouse because we got the key off her as well. I took a um, iron key off of Fala. I still feel so wrong about all of that. Yeah, I mean, Ash will definitely walk over to her greenhouse and just say it's hers now. <laughs> <laughs> you give her you, that key. It's... You made this? I made this. I made this. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that meme be so appropriate, actually. That's, that's, that's it right there. Now, we'll keep an eye out to see what's happening with that property. If she, like, puts it up for sale and leaves town. If she ever makes it out of the pit alive. Well, you gave her a gold coin, so... Yeah, she's unconscious in the Underdark. 
I mean, it's unlikely that she's still alive, but possible. Mm-hmm. What happens to a building if all the owners go missing, Arctic? Government takes it. Yeah, well, it's the same thing as Trollskull, right? Saying it becomes ours. Do they have they a... Place? I, I would prefer not to forge anything when it comes to property rights in Waterdeep. Ah, come on. With things like that, it's a very good way to get, like, thrown into Under Mountain and told never to return. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what does the city do once they've claimed properties, Arctic? Do they auction them off or...? Case-by-case case basis. Hmm. All right. Well, it's the same thing as what happened with Trollskull, right? Uh, they, there was no buyer or uh, no owner, rather, and they got auctioned off. Then pass from drinking game to drinking game. Right, so yeah, next time we see Jalester right before we leave for the mission, I'm just going to like ask him to find out what happens with that and let me know if they're going to auction it. Absolutely. Would be good to, I guess, add it to our repertoire. But then Ash could, like, run it, right? Yeah. Um, and it's appropriate for a spore druid, I think. And, um, yeah, we'd still buy off them. But it's it, it's a way of replacing the resource without losing it. Like, because we, mm-hmm. we, ba- we essentially lost the use of that shop when uh, we did what we did. So, you mean when she did what she did? Look, I'm not going to argue semantics. <laughs> you think you think she'd sell us more potions after trying to kill us? Oh, hey guys, I failed to assassinate you yesterday, so here's a potion of healing that's actually laced with cyan. I think we could have talked our way out of that. No, way. I'm sure there's a number of different ways we handled it, but yeah. it it happened the way it happened. Yeah. I, I think it was great. Um, but my character is obviously upset about the whole thing. All right. Anyway, we've we've put off this Aldrich thing for uh, too long, I think. I think right. that was intentional. I mean, <laughs> I was like scared about what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, I just looked at while I was putting the tokens down on the map, and I just noticed how beautiful Bjorn looks. That is Thank a very you. nice polar bear. There. <laughs> It took me way longer to find that picture than any other character if I've... <laughs> it's, that, it's majestic. Majestic, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what I ended up typing was majestic polar bear. Perfect. Google, you, you have served as well. That is a good picture. Right. House of Pain. So, watch me whip, watch me nay nay. Here you are out the front. <laughs> Of <laughs> blackjacks, whips, and leathers. Um, you um uh, the the clientele within there are um are, are rich people, um mostly dressed uh, exquisitely, uh while the people doing most of the serving are dressed in very little, and what they do have is leather, leather boots, uh, leather bras, leather pants. Uh, leather caps, leather masks, leather whips, leather cloaks. And, and, and they, they have a lot of style. They have a lot of style. Um, beautiful, supple black leathers and whites and, and, and other colours. Um, a whole wide range of various boots and hats, crocodile skin shoes and the like. It, it's quite magnificent. Um, in fact, if, uh, if, if, they, uh, they have a sign there. It's only a small sign, but it says buying exotic skins and leathers. So, anyway, there you go. Oh, I, bris- <laughs> I bristle at that. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Well, you would bristle even more um, if you were to know that tabaxi skins are for sale somewhere else in the city, but, but not here. But that's, for, that's a story for another time. Um. So, yeah, a customer service representative comes up to you. She's wearing a tight pair of pants and a small uh, bosom piece, as well as a as a black bandit mask and a pair of uh, cat ears. Oh, meow. And black lipstick. You got oh, you it. I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> She's wearing a mask. It's just a little bandito mask. Oh, little like that. Oh. Exactly, like cat. Ah. I and, check uh, out her ears and, like, are those real? <laughs> Thank you for saying so, but no. And can I help you today? 
Yes, greetings. I am Payne Aldrich Gale. I am seeking the entrance to the House of Pain. You, um, uh, just one minute. I, can I get my manager, please? Uh, oh, sure. show, show your badge, you know. That, oh, for God's thing. sake. The badge. Which, my holy symbol? Uh, yes, but, the, you know, the, the, the thing that Lairil gave you to say, I am uh, supreme authority of blah, blah, blah. You're oh, with the cops? Course. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm with the House of Pain. I am oh. with the Church of Leviathan. Oh, 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 oh! You're Eldritch. She starts hyperventilating. Oh, oh, right this way. She bows and bows again and, and takes you out the back, past um, past the, the the staff only area and past the manufacturing where they they put together where they put the studs into the leather. Yeah, it's a, it's a real job. And um, at the back, uh, down to, and she shows you, but she presumes that you know what you're doing. I mean, she's only worked part-time here anyway. She shows you the small staircase. It's only narrow, maybe three or three and a half feet wide. Is the polar bear with us? Yeah, it's yeah. very uncomfortable. Really not like <laughs> this. The polar bear is like, you're, you're kidding me, right? You're, like, you're serious. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Adventuring. I hate adventuring. Squeeze that furry butt down there. Or we'll be... <laughs> they sell oil here, so if you need to oil your polar bear, then uh, you've come to the right place. There, there's oh, no good you... choice here. You go in front and you get potentially crushed, or you go behind and you have to see what's behind. Exactly. exactly. Always use lube, kids. Do you need a lot of it for this bear ass? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I'm just gonna wait up here. You, you guys go ahead. I don't think Torn will fit. I can. Uh, I thank the lady, and uh, before we go down, uh, I ask her, uh, "Would you like a blessing?" Uh, no, thanks. Are you sure? I only work here part time. I'm. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not part of the religion. I praise Saloon. You know, I like the Moon God. I I, I I I spit at her feet. Please don't fire me. <laughs> and you know what? I I worship uh, saloon uh, part time as well. You know. <laughs> oh, that's really what, what cool. Are, what are the chances? You know. Oh, 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 it's amazing. Say, would you like to buy a belt? Uh, I I don't really use belts. No. Um, what kind of belt? Well, I, I think a belt would look smashing on you. Oh, here we have snake leather, uh, deer. Uh, for the budget customer, we also have things a little more regular. Well, uh... He doesn't spend money, don't worry about it. I, I do spend... My, I'll have one of those whips, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes, the, the one with the beads on the end. <laughs> Absolutely, and so they sell you a whip that is double the price of the player's handbook one and functions just the same. See, I, I am not frugal at all. I, I, I just spend money all the time, willy-nilly. You, like sir, you, sir, have a great deal of class and style. Sorry? Is he turning pale and, and like, losing blood? <laughs> He's certainly trembling. There's no doubt about that. I don't... <laughs> Why, why do you buy stuff? I'm so confused. Don't you just take what you want? Well, no, that, that, that's against the law. It, that's it, stealing. I mean, no one ever stops me. Well, perhaps they should. <laughs> I, I, I think they're scared of me for some reason. I don't know why. You really don't need these possessions. As I'm riding on top of a polar bear. Confused why people are scared of me. Uh, well, I, if you're waiting up here, then try not to get into any trouble while we're gone. Okay, I'll try. Are we going down, Aldrich? Yes, yes. You go after you or after me? That's a beautiful whip. I bet you it was expensive. It it was. Um. After you, Aldrich. All right, follow me. All right. So you're deep beneath, um, or you're going beneath water deep. 
Um, the place of the, the the section of Undermountain that you've explored is predominantly around the Castle Ward, uh, the oldest sector of Waterdeep. The Yawning Portal sits in the in the docks ward, but it's in the most northern reaches of the dock, right on the border between the docks and the, the Castle Ward. Right now, you're underneath the Sea Ward, so it's a it's a several miles, maybe uh, two miles north, a quarter mile west of the Yawning Portal, roughly. Um, uh, you go down, 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 across the road from the Castle Anters estate with its beautiful, beautiful butterflies and gardens. Down, down, down. Carving uh, along these crudely carved stairs, which were created 150 years ago by relatively untrained hands at uh, a considerable expense, certainly to the slaves' lives at least. And these, uh, so these crumbling stairs were never built to last in the first place, and they haven't been maintained uh, during that, during the, the, the century of chaos we call the spell plague. Uh, the, and as a result, the entire thing is deteriorated and dangerous, and it looks like it gets uh, quite a lot of traffic in spite of all of that. As you're approaching the bottom, um, you can hear the conversation going on uh, between some deep, booming voice, far too bass, bassy and, and, um, and guttural to be human, and, and something high-pitched and, um, and annoying, quite frankly, and again, too nasal to, to, be, uh, to come from human tongues. They're speaking the undercommon language. Who can speak that? I can. Yeah. I can speak. I, I can. If you can, you can make a perception check. Uh, if you care about uh, what this casual conversation might be. Uh, yeah, you all really? pick off on it. It's pretty good, eh? Pretty consistent. That is a good check. Um. And it sounds like uh, an ogre and a kobold having a conversation um, about work and about what they're going to do when they get off work, which is get drunk and, and do a lot of eating. <laughs> so they have to have a conversation about this? Well, they say they talk, and I say, oh, I'm going to get so drunk when I get off work. Oh, I'm going to have a big pig. Oh, that sounds delicious. You like eggs? Oh, no, not really. <laughs> I, 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 I just interject uh, uh, Egg is good for your coat I say to the bugbear uh, you, say, you, say, you say this to the, to down, the, down the corridor as you're, as you're coming down the, the, the stairs Yeah Alright And um, uh, they, you find a pair of um, individuals A kobold and an ogre And they are dressed from head to toe in armour um, Scale mail uh, it looks like it's been fashioned in water deep. It's relatively new, not that clean, but it's relatively new at least. And they um, and they wear tabards that are quite clearly the open holy symbols of Leviathan um, uh, atop them. Each of them has a whip at their belt, but they're carrying a spear and their shield in um, in their hands. Uh, uh, Who goes there? Says the kobold, and uh, the ogre, you know, gets ready to stab you. I I raise my hands up and say greetings. I'm Payne Aldrich. I'm here to to see the church. Perhaps you heard of me. And they look at each other. Who? High priest of Leviathan. <laughs> sure, buddy. I point. To his, <laughs> I point to his newly. Parches whip. See, he has the the soup. Make a uh, make a persuasion check, um, uh, Ariok, because that's a pretty good argument you've got there. I would have thought the high priest would have a really old and worn out whip from lots of use. Good point, but but but, but no, the kobolds like new things. Oh, I, yeah, shit. He's like, oh my. 
They, they, they step right aside and then, then they throw themselves onto the ground and supplicate themselves. Sorry, Master! Show us! Show us mercy! Do not hurt us, Master! High Priest, uh... uh what did you say? Uh, oh, Alvich! High Priest Alvich! <laughs> Aldrich! And I... Alvich! Aldrich! Aldrich! Oh. Ah. The, the kobold starts whipping the ogre. I, I sort of play Alvich? into... You're a bitch. I, I sort of play into being like uh, part of Aldrich's crew, and I, I, I turn to Aldrich. Oh, please, Master, let me torture them. I will show them uh, the wrongdoings of their actions. I look at Severin with the the crazed smile and say, "Yes, go ahead, punish uh, them." I go up to one of them and I. <laughs> I lick my finger and I stick it in their ear. Ah! Uh, take that. Now oh. you'll think twice about getting his name wrong. Oh, I yuck, immediately yuck. frown. <laughs> what a terrible punishment. <laughs> I, I, consider, I consider going back up the stairs. What's going on down there, guys? You don't want to know. <laughs> you will later regret not going back up the stairs. I'm just foreshadowing. Like there is a there, sometime in the uh, later on, you're like you're going. I wish I went back up this. <laughs> the, the people up here are really weird. The people down the here are really weird. weird. I guess the greeting down here is just stick your finger in someone's ear. I don't get it. They want to skin uh, my polar bear. We didn't do. do this at the monastery. I go up to the uh, kobolds. I. Um, are they kneeling? Yeah, even more, they're like, um, prostrate completely, yeah. I, I put my foot on his head, and then I whip him, and then I go to the ogre, and I do the same thing, and then I say, praise Leviathan. They pray, praise her, they praise her, and grovel, and lick your boots. And I assume this is the way peons? <laughs> yes, master! All right, carry on. Then. And then I just continue down the way. Come on, guys. Here's some uh, whip cracking coming from down that chamber and the occasional scream of a man or a woman. Um, and it echoes through the chamber. The air down here is stale, but is uh, uh, but there, it is still kept a little bit fresh by um, holes up in the, the roof that, that occasionally echo with noise from above, uh, as if you're passing under uh, people going about their daily business up in Waterdeep. You can hear their, their voices murmuring, uh, echoing through slight cracks in the stone that provide uh, some measure of fresh air. All right. Uh, you are approaching um, an area that sounds like it's quite alive. That sounds it sounds like m population going on there. You hear the murmur of maybe a dozen people or more. You can smell some pretty disgusting stenches, uh, foul smokes as well as human excrement and and and, and things that are equally as bad. And um, there is the soft glow of a firelight uh, uh, flickering. Up ahead, you'll know you're getting close now. Um, uh, soon, some temple gates come into come into view. It's a portcullis, a traditional uh, portcullis that you might have in a castle, barring the front gate. But um, but this one blocks the 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 twelve foot wide, twelve foot tall passage that you guys are walking down. Through. Uh, still continue forward then. Uh, the doors are closed. It does appear that way. Uh, I press them to be open. Okay, so um, uh, everyone came down except for um, Kaisia and her bear, right? I yeah. think so. Cool. Yeah, everyone who came. Yeah, keeping uh, think... in mind that Aldrich, uh, Tert, Lucius, and Sanja are back at Trollskull still. Right, Lucius and Sanja aren't there either. Cool, well, I'll keep you guys, you know, I'll keep you on the map just for the sake of so that you don't have to stare at a blank screen. 
forever. I'll give you little hearts so that we know that we love you. And that, that we made the correct choice and we'll always believe that in our hearts. <laughs> exactly, that's right. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> something like that. And, um, yeah, up ahead, you can see a, uh, a portcullis, and you approach it. There are the screams and, uh, of pain and, uh, and of ecstasy, the crack of whips up ahead. And um, uh, there is a woman. She, um, she is patrolling backwards and forwards as she talks to people. She looks at you with a glare as you approach. She wears a, she wears a chainmail bikini and has um, long red hair uh, with a whip in one of her hands. Uh, of course, it's her. Of course, she's alive with Le- Leviathan. Jesus Christ! Mm-hmm. Ah, Ruby, do you remember me? Oh, it seems that you come here at last. What took you so long? I've been quite busy managing a tavern and building a reputation being a hero. You know, it takes precedence. Oh, well, you should come on in now. It is about time that you meet the High Priestess. Yes, yes, yes. These are my companions. Hello, everybody. My name is Ruby. Welcome, welcome. Watch your step. Watch your tongue. Just nod and very. Uh, I won't say confused by all this. I've seen a. I've seen a lot. Of, I've seen the drow do a lot worse. Uh, y- yes. Hello. Uh, uh, we're Boob here. I, uh, we're new here. Hmm. Welcome. Welcome. This area is grotty and soiled with filth, uh, and um, and broken glass on the ground. Um, there are beggars here, and uh, cheap hookers, and masochists, uh, people selling drugs and, um, and, and using them, uh, drinking and smashing the bottles when they're done, openly copulating. It's... Um, it's pretty debauched, uh, but I guess nothing can distract you so much uh, from uh, either the sound of whips cracking up ahead as uh, some unfortunate soul lashed to a um, to a wooden frame. Uh, it takes further lashings from uh, from a woman clad in the sort of leathers that the that the attendants were wearing up in blackjacks up above, or perhaps you're a little bit more distracted, disturbed even by the sheer number of children that are here, uh, from small children all the way down to infants, crawling around in the filth and the broken glass, picking up uh, grubs and other things and putting them in their mouths and and uh, uh, playing with mangy dogs that bark and growl if you get too close. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take position in a corner, just sort of staying away <laughs> from all of this. <laughs> I have a look of ecstasy on my face. Like I just climbed uh, like the tallest mountain and achieved something great. A couple of um, thugs are walking around and they keep an eye on you, but they don't. Sorry, you were saying. Oh, that's, I'm just going to continue to follow Ruby uh, to the no. priestess. No worries, sorry. Uh, you were saying sorry, Kai, see you, will you? No, 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 no. It was me. Don't worry about it. Oh, it was. What, what, what? Sorry. Yeah. Just you need to seek professional help. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. On a uh, on a major scale, Dungeons and Dragons is my <laughs> my uh, professional help. I didn't Very unprofessional. Met him. <laughs> but but really, come on, really. Anyway, and so here you are in this in this filthy domain. Uh, with its uh, filth-ridden people who seem to be here willingly, there's a there's there's this feeling of inescapable poverty and enslavement and depravity that that fills this filth 
ridden den with its crawling centipedes and spiders and cockroaches. But the portcullis is open now, and there ain't no one running for the exit. I continue forward and uh, I go up to the high priestess. She stops whipping. Who are you? I kneel and I say, I am Pain Aldrich Gale. High priest of Leviathan. It is an honor to be here. It is an honor to have you here. Well, what can we do for you are a priest of Allah. Where have you come from? Uh, from the water deep. Oh. No kidding. Really? <laughs> How amazing. You must be exhausted after your long travel. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you ran this church? <laughs> this is not my temple. If you wish to find Shina, you will find her through there. And she points towards the south. Ah, uh, thank you. And uh, may Leviathan always be with you. I continue you down the hallway. Down. You can see that she wants to, you know, show you some spider lip, but she thinks better of it. Uh, I'd like to find a moment just to have a look around quickly, see if anyone's paying attention to me, and then use my ring of invisibility to go invisible. Oh, sure. Um, okay, make an insight check. Yeah, beautiful. Um, the only people that aren't truly bleary-eyed here are Ruby, the thugs, and uh, the priestess, or the Scourge Maiden is a proper title, that we just uh, interrogated. A couple of kids as well. So, in fact, the kids are probably the sharpest eye of all. So there's nowhere that you'd be able to disappear where you can't be seen by either Ruby or the thugs or the 12 to 8-year-olds. So pick uh, one of those. Well, yeah, I will pick the 12-year-olds. All right, so you disappear in front of them, and they gasp. And they're like, wow, he just turned invisible, wow. I, I shush while I'm invisible, and I drop a few coins in front of them. Oh, they, they pick up the coins, and like as they start shifting through, this, this big, burly human bloke uh, missing a couple of teeth starts pushing the kids out of the way and taking the money from well, none of my problem. <laughs> All right. I just uh, lean over to the female tabaxi and say, and just mutter under my breath, I've seen drow slave pits that are better kept than this place. You have problems. <laughs> <laughs> and I just kind of blink and say, fair enough. I myself, uh, like a kid in a candy store, is, was too excited to notice uh, Zevram disappearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you're in some kind of uh, religious ecstasy, I imagine, right now. There are people just like me. I'm not a freak like my parents told me. <laughs> exactly, that's right. I can identify with people who have... Who have Anyway, I'm not saying I'm any of um, As you throw right around the corner, you almost run, bam, almost, into some armed guards. These people must be six foot ten. Massive, clad in armor, and with huge glaives uh, that they, uh, they are carrying. They walk quite quietly for all their armaments. And you almost smash, bang, into them, and you see they are wearing the heraldry that you would instantly recognize as House Castellant. And indeed, only a few steps behind them are one Victoro Castellanta and his wife Amelia, and a handful of steps behind them is a tiefling, uh, a beautiful woman who uh, 
is perhaps their uh, the handmaid, perhaps, of Amelia. Bam! You almost run into him. As you do, I guess you've. What does what do you as a group, as individuals, do in that instant? Because the warriors look like they might gut you on the spot. I say, oh, uh, exactly. Go ahead. I just said, I just leap back, you know, out of melee range. Sorry, in surprise. I say, excuse me, sorry, I'm I'm looking for the high priestess that runs this church. And um, the uh, the guards they step out of the way on under the instruction of their master. Come, come forward," says uh, Victoro Casablanca. I'm gonna try and ghost uh, Aldrich just so I'm not making. Uh... Like I'm trying to match his footsteps, so I'm making sound with them, not his, uh, not my own footsteps. If that makes sense. Yeah. It looks like his wife is going to speak something, but he holds her his hand up, and she holds her tongue. I take note of their faces, and uh, I just continue walking. Wait, what? What are you doing here? Uh, not that it's any of your business, really, but I'm here to see the High Priestess and hopefully receive the rites of pain. What are you doing here? That is none of your business. But I want you to know that you must not be up to any mischief while you are down here. Show respect. And are you a priest or a cleric of the Viatar? If we were but 100 feet above, I would have you thrown in prison for the rest of your life for being insolent enough to ask me questions. But right now, I am in a good mood, so I will bid you good day. Well, you know, I reside in Troskral Manor, right? We have not had enough time to negotiate and to talk to each other. I look for a chance, I look forward for a chance for us all to sit down and and talk. Well, whenever you find your balls, you know where I live, and I just continue walking. When I find my balls, they will be in your mouth. Man! This is a weird campaign. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Billy's fault. You joined at a weird time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's choir up here, up in this uh, sector. And, um, you, uh, you find yourself approaching. Uh, a, a dank hallway. Uh, I better give some light because this place is actually lit up ahead. I'll bring the light down. Um. Yeah. Sorry about this. Uh, a light source should do it. Okay. Cool. So up at, um, uh, as you reach the intersection, you can see that um, it leads on the uh, on the right to a uh, to a drop off. There's a, I guess a portcullis, a kind of um, a gate, a big iron gate, big Barbican iron gate beyond the holy symbol of Leviathan, which is etched into the ground with tiles. Uh, different mosaic coloured tiles make up this beautiful, if you like. A uh, holy symbol of Leviathan. Beyond that, a massive iron gate, and beyond the iron gate, it just drops off. Just drops off uh, to some distance you can't see, but there is the flash of lightning down there, sparks <laughs> reverberating of um, bolts of electricity. However, it is towards the other direction that most of you will no doubt find your eyes drawn, because um, 
You were looking into what might be a central temple or shrine or, or throne room. There is a throne, and upon that throne sits a, uh, a beautiful woman of fair skin and dark hair with, with vaguely half-elven features. She has a, uh, a leopard at her feet, a, a white leopard. Um, and uh, she's flanked by a pair of huge statues of Leviathan, of a um, beautiful naked and slim woman. Um, with, uh, there is a half-elf, a female half-elf who, uh, who watches you carefully, blades in her hands, and, um, blue tattoos glowing with arcane fire, uh, decorated along her back. And finally, uh, some guards, uh, two of those scourge maidens who you negotiated with earlier, and a dark-skinned man, um, who looks like he's ready to and willing to die uh, for, for these women. Uh, I, I get on my hands and knees, and I slowly crawl to the woman uh, at the throne and say, I assume you are the high priestess. And um, you, the woman you crawl towards, um, she maintains eye contact with you the whole time, um, keeping a straight back and uh, sitting regally while you approach. But her companion, uh, the half-elf, moves in and says, This, you speak to a queen, and you will address her as your majesty. Ah, uh, Yes. Your Majesty, I am pain out of scale. I am ecstatic to be here and in your presence. I am delighted to have you here, pain Eldritch scale. I have heard so much about you. Oh, I'm quite flattered that you, I, I, my deeds have been known to reach down here. Of course, your reputation precedes you. Why, look at you. Your your names are on the lips of so many. It would be an honor if, to receive a blessing, even though I'm not worthy of such an honor. But And then I kind of take my, my whip and I hold it out, like, up to her. <laughs> Hmm. What have you done to deserve this? Pilgrimage alone can surely not be reason for me to dispense such holy effects upon you. I do nothing to deserve this, and I don't deserve anything from the Viatar, as none of us do, but... If I was wondering if you could, if not bless me, but at least uh, have the uh, the rites of pain performed, I would I would be honored to ha have that ritual be performed on me. I still haven't earned my white rod from the Viator. Hmm. Your eagerness should be rewarded. Please, Scourge Maidens, do your worst. Allow me, Your Majesty, if, if I'm, if you may. Very well, Jonah. You may deliver the retribution. She is brutal. She begins with a whip. She soon turns to her high heels, her long fingernails, and it's a disturbing and disgusting and slightly enlightening and bloody ceremony uh, that uh, you are all forced to endure, I suppose, unless you wish to turn away now. Well, I'm just watching it because uh, I'm just pretty confused because, you know, I've seen Drow do this kind of thing to their prisoners and yet here people are willingly accepting this kind of treatment and I don't, I don't get it. I'm going to move over here and just lean against the wall and try to pretend that 
Yeah, but there's there's one big difference between this and what the Drow do. Aldridge probably has a massive hard on right now. Exactly, that's why that's what uh, Drowsia doesn't understand. She doesn't understand why people would willingly want this. Well, I'm not looking at this, but I can probably hear it. Um, but I'm thinking this is a great distraction. Yeah. yeah. Give me a chance to see if I can find uh, if this is somehow trapped on the floor or uh, if there's a lever to maybe turn off the grate or... Yeah, yeah. just looking around generally, I guess, to see how I might get into this place. All right. Uh, he takes a, the, the ritual's not short, so you have advantage on your investigation. As they're hitting me, I'm just screaming, Hit me! <laughs> well, she does. She, she enjoys it more than you do. No, it is not. Fortunately not. This is a, uh, a special, very special day. We've been yeah. we've been delaying entering the Temple of Pain for months now. <laughs> I will, however, say this is normal for the for for Aldrich. So yeah, so think of this as, <coughs> and it is, it's his, it's his own little side quest. Um, yeah, and so hopefully this will be the last. Anyway, <laughs> <coughs> you look at it, and for first you find nothing. There's no traps here on this symbol. This mosaic is is pretty. But um, but apart from that, it, it serves no magical purpose. However, you discover that um, you discover two things, or maybe even more. Um, you discover that um, where this portcullis ends, it drops off immediately, forty feet down into the darkness, down into the solid stone. So even once you get, even once you lift this gate, you would then be forty feet above the ground. You are able to um, open the gate. Um, we, you'd be able to lockpick it. You've um, uh, you've discovered how it's not particularly complex, at least not to someone of your skill. And um, you're able to see like the the flickering of lightning um, in the ground below. Some some magical effect. Who knows? And beyond that, um, even more tunnels. One that leads uh, two that lead north, and one that leads east. Uh, make a perception check. And you hear screams and whimpers and cries and moans. You hear prayers. You hear gnashing of teeth. You hear regret. You hear people shushing babies. Um, well, I am going to attempt to open this gate if I can. Uh, and then, yeah, I guess get a better picture of what I can see through here. Uh, so oh. it's just a sheer drop off, is what you're saying? Yeah, I'll 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 show you because it's because it is uh, porous. You're able to look through. Yeah. Right. Okay. Interesting. Um. So yeah, if I'm able to get through there, I don't really have anything to stop myself from taking full damage, I don't think. Yeah, I don't. Uh, is it possible to climb down the wall? Uh, I mean, theoretically. Right. Uh, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dagger and I just want to throw it down towards this area here. Yeah, sure. Um, it'll make a fair bit of noise, but go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm just trying not to do anything that might reveal my invisibility at the moment. So that's the only option I have at the moment. So yeah, I'll throw down the drag dagger just to see if there's any reaction within the room. There's no reaction down there, but there is a reaction from back here. What was that noise? And um, like she sends one of the scourge maidens to come and investigate. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to press myself up against the wall. Make a stealth roll. You don't have advantage because she's being pretty, pretty thorough. She doesn't find anything. 
doesn't see the dagger. It was rats. It must have been the wind. It must have been the wind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to sort of take note of what I see here. It, does it look like the... So these electric things, what are they? Uh, little pulsating um, tiles, I suppose. Um, you'd need an arcana check to have any concept or understanding of them at all. Uh, certainly, I'll try. Yeah. Are you familiar with Spell Plague? Uh, I've heard of it, never experienced it myself. Yeah. So this is re this is residual. Well, well, it's difficult to define, especially with an arcana check of twelve. But this is residual spell play. If you can, uh, the, the world was the blue fire was erupting all over the place during the spell play, um, out of people's tattoos and eyes and everywhere. And uh, there are multiple columns of, of of that same sort of electric blue fire dancing here. Um, it um. If you were a smarter wizard, you might be able to categorize it on some sort of metaphysical level. But as far as you can tell, it's spell plague, and that's 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 maybe enough. There's not columns of it. It's like a little bursts of, of of flame and electricity bubbling up out of the ground over a five foot by five foot square several times. There's six of them. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm clearly not equipped to deal with this right now, especially with the drop off and not knowing what's beyond. But I'm I have an idea of what I might do, but it's going to take me time to get something together. So for now, I will uh, ignore what's happening here and go back to the first room. All right. No worries. And so, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, just just uh, to let you know what I'm doing is I'm going back to the first room. I'm going to find a moment to reveal myself somewhere, mm. and then I'm just going to find the most drugged out person there and just sit next to them and pretend like I'm talking to them. They want money. <laughs> How much money do they want? Uh, since you're asking, they they want gold. Since you you know, <laughs> loves giving it away. <laughs> I, I I give them two gold coins to appease them. They really like you. They offer you some of their whiskey and spit. Uh, make, make, him roll, spit. make him roll for a heart attack. <laughs> no. I I will not partake of either and just tell them to pretend like they're talking to me and shut up. Oh, they, they, that doesn't make sense, but that's what I'm saying. Uh, he tells you about the time that he uh, that he caught a uh, stagecoach, right? And yeah, it went up to Mirabar. It was oh yeah, yeah, back in those days. Mm. Yes, great <laughs> story. Mm -hmm. And then what? Yes, uh, yeah, that was, it was uh, Knowles. It was Knowles, anyway. And so the uh, the ritual is finally complete as uh, Aldrich. Uh, gloriously loses consciousness from a high heel delivered with the toe to the side of his temple. Oh. Oof. I'm smiling as I'm opening. You know, you have to come down here and get the shit kicked out of you. <laughs> hey, you could have just Capable. Um, who else wishes to join the organization? Asked the uh, so called queen. Just uh, don't respond, just still just watching low over this room. The half elf takes the Aldrich's corpse up to you and dumps it in front of you. Of course. Uh, I believe this belongs to you. I guess. Uh, I've tried to take it from her. No, no, I don't it. think so. He's still breathing, apparently. Oh, he said corpse. So. Wow. Well, I, I can fix that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe the proclamation of his death is a little premature. Maybe I should go back to the monastery. I don't think the city people are <laughs> the, the world is a weird place. <laughs> <laughs>
I think they go back to the monastery. <laughs> Sorry, am I, am I knocked out? You are for now, unless one of these guys, you know, want to do something about it. And they're probably happy to leave you in an unconscious state, I imagine. I'll uh, kneel down beside him and return the favor. He used uh, cure wounds on me earlier when I took a bucket to the noggin. <laughs> so I'm going to cast cure wounds on him. Welcome back to the land of the living. Yeah, with a second level spell slot. I stand up and and I stretch my arms out and I smile with bloodshot eyes and and I give a addressed a a, a big hug and say, "I am the happiest man right now." Did I, you join in the ritual? I just awkwardly return the hook and then pull away. <laughs> no, I, no, I didn't participate myself. And I just say out of the side of my face, you're the weirdest man. And I start walking out. <laughs> All right. Do we leave the temple behind? Uh, before we leave, uh, I go to the queen and I say, I say, uh, high priestess, there's no reason to hide anymore. You can go to the surface and, you know, spread the word of Leviathar. Just, I'm a hero of the city, and they know what religion I serve. My friend, my friend, she says as she, as she lays her hand on, on your face. My beautiful child, who do you think gave you your legal authority in the first? Of, of course, of course, I... Was... I just, you know, would like to see more of you, up there, especially yourself, your In fact, uh, please, all of you, come come to Trollskull Manor any time. Very well. I am sure that we can find various ways to align our interests. And there will be a new area where we can spread our mm -hmm. words. There'll be Dragon Spear uh, once we claim the lands. A leopard rubs up against your leg, and in between them. Uh, that sounds delightful. With the Xanathar's Guild destroyed, and the Zentarum being dismantled, soon we will hold this city not by the ball but by the throat. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. She kisses the air in front of you, but doesn't bless you with, a, with touching us. I kind of crawl back up, and uh, I stand, and then I bow once more, and then I... Uh, I follow the group, uh, I guess, towards the exit. Uh, the uh, female half, the half elf, comes up and puts her arm around the queen as you leave, and you hear her say, I "Don't trust." Me. The queen merely looks up at her, but doesn't reply. We're a very, we're a very chaotic and grey party. Yeah, you're pretty sinister. I mean, I'm cool with it. I mean, <laughs> it is we... not it is not evil for him to have his own king. <laughs> no, I was thinking, you know, have water deep by the throat. Yes, but uh, that, that's something that we weren't we weren't even out of character. We hadn't heard about previously. Like, yeah. we'll see. Uh, and we didn't hear that conversation either, so no character would know what they were just talking about then. But isn't Aldrich lawful evil? Yeah. Aldrich <laughs> is not the party. The party is not evil. Aldrich is evil. <laughs> I, I think it's entirely possible for him to pursue his character's goals while still aligning with the party. Oh, yeah. There's no reason that one needs to take precedence. Oh, certainly. Although I, I do believe I've figured out what's going to be happening later levels, though. 
<laughs> it's going to be like the city is going to be divided in three. You're going to have like the Church of Elastray defending the innocent. Then you're going to have like this gang that completely subordinates themselves to Lucius and Sanj. And then you're going to have the cult of Leviathan with Aldrich. Well, I know what yeah, my late, I know what my late game plan is now. It, I've I've seen this area that I want to get into that I assume will have what I'm looking for in it, but I need to devise a way. Yeah, of course I'm coming back here. Um, <laughs> I, I repay my debts. All right. Yeah. Before, before you joined yeah. the group, when, when a couple of characters like got fucking mind blasted and killed, he made a deal with the temple of Helm without Aldrich knowing about stealing something from the temple of Leviathan. <laughs> Yeah, no, I heard about that. I mean, you tell, you tell Lucius and Sanj that there's spell plague fire down there, and I'm sure that'll get some curiosity going. Yeah, I'm going to devise a plan, and I'm, I'm going to see how I can introduce it to you guys, maybe. That night, Zevram, um, although we don't necess- we're not necessarily skipping ahead, we might be, we might not, but that night, Zevram, um, you've, uh, do you say any prayers or oaths or... or or perhaps write it in your little dear diary. Is there any? Do you tell the universe about your plan? <laughs> I, I guess um, since I'm still, yeah, I, I, I guess seeing what transpired down there, I'm having a bit of a you know a crisis moment myself, much like uh, Adrasti, and I am thinking, oh Jesus Christ, I'm so thankful to have the things that I have, and that I'm not part of some evil cult. Uh, like the Leviathan, and so I might be, you know, uh, saying a short prayer to Saloon and Ilistri to, you know, help guide me in my future endeavours and hope that I don't alienate Aldrich, although he does a good job of doing that himself, uh, by by going through with these plans. Ah, so so that's not quite an oath then, is it? It's more of a... Uh, a series of steps under certain conditions. Well, no, I'm going through with it. I, I do uh, plan to fulfil my promise to the Temple of Helm, but I'm, I'm sort of asking for guidance from my two matrons that this uh-huh. is the right path. All right. And um, you look to the gods for some sort of guidance and you look to the moon and wonder. And um, you're, you're praying, and, and why won't the gods speak to you? Why won't they give you a sign? Why won't they give you a message? And now there's someone knocking at your door, interrupting you. Who is it? Oh, it's a Drastia. Oh, if I, why won't the gods send me a sign? And now I've got my, 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 my housemate bothering me. Oh, Drastia, you kind of feel, you know complicated by this whole thing there's a there's a great deal of 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 peace in your soul thanks to um your recent discovery of illustre but but like you're in bed with these terrible people like like but but severum he's a nice kid right maybe if you go and talk to him it'll maybe he can kind of understand Uh, so you are, you're knocking it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I greet Zevram and say, uh, good evening, Zevram. You uh, mind if I come in? I was in the middle of something, but all right. What is it? I, I come in and just, you know, take a seat and say, yeah, I, wanted, I just wanted to apologize for the way I treated you when we first met. Uh, oh, uh, thank you. Um. Uh, and I apologize for uh, if I was too clingy or, um, well, annoying. I, You're really the only other drow that I've spoken to that hasn't immediately tried to kill me. Although you <laughs> string me up, tried to string me up with that trap of yours. Yes, I, I'm sorry. He's, you can never be too careful in the Underdark. No, right, of course. Uh, of course, I understand. Uh, I'm just at a loss as to what to do as of late. 
Yeah, I can echo that sentiment. What is it that's bothering you? Well, don't tell the others this, all right? Um, but when we first started our adventures, uh, we came across the Xanathar's Guild in the sewers in our search for Rene, uh, a noble in the city. Uh, you wouldn't know him, but I'll introduce you. Um, and, well, not all of us made it out of it all right. And, well, I went to the nearest temple, the uh, Temple of the Watchers, uh, Elm's Temple, and I asked them, you know, please, uh, to save my friends, I'll do anything. And they said, all right, we will help your friends, and you will, you will help us in retrieving a lost heirloom, uh, a, a gauntlet, a black gauntlet from, well, from where we just were, down in that cesspit of depravity. I see. So you're finding yourself stuck between making one decision or the other. I don't want to hurt Aldrich uh, by doing something that would jeopardize his station uh, in the temple, but at the same time, I made a promise. Uh, Aldrich was one of the people that these Helmites resurrected. Uh, but I don't expect him to understand that. Yeah. I see. Uh, is, is there no way to get the gauntlet by more legitimate means? I highly doubt it, but I hadn't really thought about it. I had just planned to go in there and retrieve it. Um, I didn't think that we would have a reception like the one we did when we went with Aldrich. Uh, but in doing so, uh, it afforded me time to look into where it's possibly being kept. I have an idea of how to get in there, but I won't be able to do it alone. I see. Well, I put my hand on his shoulder and say, I'll help you with this. Uh, you, you will? Yes, of course. Uh, that's that's great. Uh, does does this mean we're friends? I uh, give a little smile and say yes, yes, we're friends. Yes, my 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 first drow friend. I knew I could do it. <laughs> uh, no, no offense. I mean, you are a drow. But... <clears throat> you may only be half, but. I apologize for what I said before. If you're, if you feel the pride <laughs> of the drow in your heart, then I suppose it doesn't matter if you're only half. You're still, you could still be considered a drow. Um, thank you. I'm not entirely sure what that means. Yeah, well, what it means to be a drow, but uh, I'm hoping <laughs> that I can find out about my family and find out more about where I came from. Yeah, perhaps I could help with that later. Uh, I, any help you can give me is appreciated. Thank you, I trust you. There's no problem. I have to stand up and bow a little. We have PvP coming oh. on. Yes. And... Oh, and remember, don't tell the others. N not yet, at least. Especially not Aldrich. Anybody. He'll kill me, for certain. Yes, I, I have mixed feelings about uh, that Aldrich. I'm not sure what to think of him yet. It's best not to think about it at all, really, I found. A, it, it's a very good coping mechanism, is to not think about things at all. I don't know about that. You can only squash your demons for so long. Sooner or later, you have to confront them. Right, but uh, we'll confront them together, right? Yes, you made uh, you made a very noble choice choosing to make promises to bring people back that I suppose you cared about. I can see how much it pains you to be forced into the situation now where you must 
betray Aldrich, the very person who you made this promise to bring back, among others. And so, when we st when we get the opportunity to steal this item that you're after, if R it comes down to it, if it comes down to it, you may place the blame upon me. I have I, no I, personal connection to Aldrich. I I could never throw you to the wolves like that, um, but I appreciate the sentiment nonetheless. Uh, nod. And say, well, I hope you feel more at ease now. Yes. I'm going to get I some sleep. I think I do. I just wish I literally it would show me some sort of sign. Ugh. <laughs> Lystra, yes. I've discovered her recently myself and it has improved my life for the better. Oh, that, that, that's great. Um, I, I, I don't know much about her, but I can teach you her ways. Um, I, I know that they like dancing uh, and getting naked. And that's as far as I've gotten. I give it a little chuckle, having seen that firsthand myself. But yes, that, that's very true. Well, good night. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'd Good wave night. and leave. S sleep tight. <laughs> Don't let the big bugs bite. <laughs> Don't let the drow stab you in the back and cr crush your house at night. <laughs> yeah, however the old saying goes. What do we do with those keys that we've got? Um, Fowler's key, iron key, and the V two three five key, obviously. I'm holding I'm on to. What it does. I'm holding on to Fowler's key, curious to see if she even dares go back to the the place after she tried to kill us. In the ten days back, there's no sign that the building has been been reopened. After uh, the second day, um, or maybe after maybe after several days, yeah, there's um, they, they, yeah, there's still no sign that anyone was. Yeah, I'd probably just ask if anybody knows what this key would unlock, like within the part. Like we discussed earlier, it's probably a vault key for like a lockbox or something. I see. W would uh, anybody know where there. you could find something like that? Probably the Castle Lanta Bank. <laughs> we yeah, we discussed this earlier. Oh. <laughs> Robbing <laughs> the castle and a bank. Oh, actually, that sounds really... Taking out a withdrawal on, under somebody else's name <laughs> who's deceased without having permission to do so. Uh, are very illegal. Is that some I'll, just, I'll just took the key away then. I'm not willing to risk something like that. Uh, there is the just for some money. Yeah, I'll just keep the key safe in case it happens to be useful at some point in the future. I cool, mean, cool. It's not just some money because it's probably lots of money. Um, I did have a question about something Arctic. Uh, yeah. The uh, Astrid or Istrid. Um, yeah. How long would I have heard her talking, if at all, during I that encounter? Can't really remember. I think the can lasted like three rounds. Right. So not very long at all. Um, I don't think so. the, the reason I ask is uh, because of my actor feat. Yeah. I, I need to have heard someone for a minute straight to uh, be able to impersonate them. Has yeah. she been in the yawning portal at all? No, no. That's that's okay. devil's job. She deals with the nobility in that. I think that's the first time all of us saw her. Pretty honest. sure, yeah. I don't, I don't think she's been a part of it before that, no. Shame. Although I am concerned about fucking Casalantas in the Temple of Pain. Well, why is that? I forgot to mention something. I, it's down low on my notes, and so it's easy for me to miss. And the the two the the guards um, with their halberds, they were carrying a chest in between them. 
right. like one hand on one hand, like that one hand on their on their halberd, and one hand on each chest. And when they bumped into you, they put the chest down on the ground. It was yeah, big enough that uh, that they had to carry it between them. But would we have yeah. heard its contents, if at all? Like it sounded empty. Body screaming inside there. Oh, empty. Okay. Mm, sounded empty. Okay. So they're, f- it seems like they're funding the church. Of- what the fuck would they be fun? They're worshippers of Asmodeus. Ah. It's uh, something we'll have to investigate, I think. But is Asmodeus really that different than the Viator? Yes. Okay. Well, well the same alignment. actually. Asmodeus is current. He's not just a devil. He is currently a god. He's been a god for like 120 years now, so most people know about it. He's like a god of indulgence and stuff. He's actually not that far off from Leviathan. Oh, that's fucking not good. I mean, uh, I, Zevram, would have told you that I saw the Castellanters because we've had uh, a brief dealing with them, I believe. We've never met them firsthand, but we've had some significant interactions with their guards and the like. Right. Okay. Like, remember when we chased down a Castellanta wagon with a rooftop chase of devils and fucking all that to get the stone and the gold and everything? Right. So, yeah. but yeah, it- Castellanta appearance is probably more significant to Lucius, Everham, and Aldrich than anyone else, but. I would have recognized them though, right? I think they're, yeah. they're pretty prominent figures in the city. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like knowing yeah various important like, members of parliament. Yeah. That's that's David Hasselhoff. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably not a bad analogy, actually, like a David Beckham or someone like that. Oh, okay, yeah. sure. Yeah, it's not a bad analogy. Really. I would, I would yeah. think it'd be more important to recognize them because you know they were like a major threat to us at one point. They were, but we never had direct dealings with them. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So you, you hang on to the keys. Hang yeah. on to them for now. Yeah. Ten days have passed. Um, Waterdeep is continuing. You know, life goes on. Um, summer has well and truly ended. Comes after summer is autumn, right? So we must be halfway through autumn. We must be just about coming up to winter by now. This campaign's been going for a while, I think. So it wouldn't be winter yet, but um, I sort of stop keeping yeah. track, unfortunately. Like, uh, uh I was going to continue my journal entries, but I just had a lot going on, so I just forgot to write in it. I might yeah, continue and- it at some point, um, but. We left on off on the third of Marpanoth, and that was a while ago now. So I don't even know what that the, means. So like Marpanoth um, is like the October. October. Yeah. The specific yeah. and that's Northern Hemisphere October. So yeah. The specific days aren't really as important anymore because no, we've no. Dragon Heart. It's probably been fifteen to twenty five days since then. I'd say so. Yeah, at least. But what did somebody you guys think? Is it the middle of autumn? Is that what you think? End of autumn. Uh, end of autumn. We'll go at the end of autumn. It's yeah. coming into into winter. I'd, I'd we haven't seen any snowflakes yet, but yeah. Do you so, think not so, quite that long? I, I don't know. I mean, it's not uncommon for us to go one or two sessions between long rests, and then sometimes we'll have two long rests in one session. So yeah. yeah. So we'll keep call it the end. Though, keep in mind, though, we've taken a ten day here and there. Yeah, true. Ten true. Days probably yeah. since then. Winter, so winter here, is probably a good call then. Yeah, it's like the equivalent of being at the very end of November. Um, okay, cool. So the snows haven't started falling yet, but the cold winds are blowing in off the harbour, and you hear people talking about how the harbour might freeze over this year like it did it was, it was half a dozen years ago. And um, yeah, the seasons are changing. Uh, the harvests come in, there's lots to, to eat, and... Uh, prices briefly drop, and, and this is all that happens over the ten days. Um, but the uh, word word gets around about the problems in the tradeway, about the problems happening at Boreskia Bridge, and the the the, the threats that people going past Dragonspear Castle always do face 
trolls from the Evermores and all the rest of it. And, um, and yeah, life goes on um, in Waterdeep. Ten days passes. All right. So uh, we've waited a while for you guys now. Are you ready to go? Um, well, now we just make the preparations for this trip. Um, right. So, yeah. Arctic, um, out of the missions you linked, are we just doing one at a time, or is it possible for us to follow up on a second one afterwards? Yeah, well, before you, before you, you leave, um, you uh, get a bit of a briefing from uh, Lairal Silverhand herself. Um, uh, so it's in there that uh, uh, the, the, the missions have basically been blended into. All right, wonderful. And I also would like to ask her the matter about Dragon Spear. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. All right. Come on. Something. All right. So. Um, you meet with uh, Lairal Silverhand, the open lord of Waterdeep. I wouldn't say she's your personal friend. Um, you have a relationship with the Blackstaff that's fairly close. Your, di your, uh, your friendship with uh, Lairal Silverhand is perhaps a little bit more distant, a little bit more professional. Um, she can't be friends with everyone. Anyway. This time you're meeting with her um, without the black staff. It's just uh, it's just you and her, and um, uh, you're speaking to her in an office that you've never been before. One of marble and of uh, flowing water fountains and of elemental fire providing the illumination. Uh, uh, one of the workhouses that Paragon, Open Lord of Wardsley, created for himself more than a century ago. After getting your account of the dragon slaying. And, um, uh, of course, commending you on the various um, achievements that you've already undertaken and, and meeting those of you who are new and whom she has absolutely no dealings with whatsoever. She begins discussing uh, the various uh, problems. As you know, um, there's a dragon threatening people building the bridge at Bereskia Bridge. She wants someone to, well, hopefully kill the dragon. But um, but at the very least, just defend uh, the reconstruction of the bridge, if that's possible. But while doing that, um, she also points out, um, uh, uh, she asks a couple of things. First of all, she wants to know what relationship the Red Wizards have to all of this. Um, uh, she uh, mentions the crossing of a, a great Zentarum army coming across the High Moor. And she also discusses um, uh, in a little more intimate quest where she asks that you send uh, that you accompany an ambassador south. So um, because we are, you know, running out of time and I, I, I want to get this scene done, it, that's the reason why I've rushed through this. Um, I, I, and the, obviously, you're going to want to know about these things, though. And so I'll, I'll now answer any questions you've got about them. I just thought that. I just wanted to lay them all on the table. She puts them all out on the table, says these are the problems. Um, you are the people that I trust to take care of them. Yeah. Um, I, I, I feel like the briefings are pretty well laid out. Um, Good. The main, the main ones we're taking interest in is escorting the ambassador because we're heading in that direction anyway. Mm. Um, and then... The, the Black Legion one, investigating the Zentarum will also be real good for us after we've done the Dragon one because immunity from taxes and tariffs is going to help when setting up a territory. Mm. Um, but yeah, on the matter of lands, um, I want to ask her about the Dragon Spear Castle because if we're going to set up lands close by, um, it's going to be necessary for us to eventually try and subjugate whatever's in there, otherwise it could be a constant threat to the lands. And if we do eventually do that, would the Lord's Alliance recognize us as the Lords of Dragonspear Castle? Yes. I feel it is within my personal authority to, do, to grant this to you. My reach, of course, extends no further than the Field Ward. But I 
have confidence that I will be able to see to it that this land is designated to you, uh, uh, to the people who conquer Dragonspear Castle. But you understand, in the past, it has required the armies of two cities to take that castle. And in such a circumstance, you can hardly expect the reward to be given to yourself. What I am saying is it is too big a task for you alone, and yet if you ask for allies, then you will find it carved up by someone else. Uh, you may have a greater claim than any with your noble blood, with your action, but it is valuable land, and if you do not do it alone, which you cannot possibly achieve, then everyone else will want it just like you do. Oh, it's we can wait and see. Well, this is not not something we're planning on rushing towards. And I'll kind of glance over at Sanj and then go. But I'm sure you're you're capable of what a number of wizards. Are ca you're well aware of what a number of wizards are capable to do, given time and effort. Well, you have my backing, at least. Uh, assuming, of course, that you are successful in your ventures. I have a question about the Red Wizards. Very uh, well, I'll do the best I'll answer, but you may be better off l interrogating them yourself direct. We have one in prison, you know. Oh. Well, it, this is more a question of what kind of mission this is. Is this, is this a uh, seek and engage, or is this purely reconnoiter? It is an investigation of rumours. At the moment, all we have is word that the Red Wizards are being blamed for a variety of, a, a, a large number of massacres and murders. Um, the West, for the Red Wizards to operate this far west is unusual in and of itself, and notable. There would be very few agents that I could trust to both investigate the wizards, but not antagonize them in the process. Uh, well, uh, has uh, your captive given you any information? Not as yet, but I feel that my investigators have been asking the wrong question. Resources are tight, they are telling me. Resources are tight. They cannot spare their zones of truths and everything and other spells for every every criminal. They have gotten what they can out of him, but it is sadly not enough for me. I feel that he is holding something back. I could perhaps question him for you, but I would require the use of a tailor to um outfit me in in their regalia. I can understand. Why you might need a costume? I shall. Uh, I shall authorize it. Excellent. Well, uh, once uh, once it's ready, then I'll be able to question him and hopefully get some answers about what these red wizards are up to. She scribbles out a, a, a check for you know a bank order for two hundred and fifty gold pieces. Damn. Get some gold filigree robes. Ah, oh, government man. They they got no idea how much things are worth. I love the bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> Very well then. Are there any questions? Uh, none for you, madam. I believe that's it. Very well. Um, you will be taking the third company with you when you depart. You will be leaving them in Dagathod. The third company are Waterdeep's own guard. But they are a patrolling unit, and as part of our alliance with Daggerford, we have decided to station a, a legion, a company there. A whole company? How many people is that? I'm actually not sure. Okay. It's at least two, and no more than 20. It's more I think it's 20. 100, actually. I'm pretty sure it's yeah, 100. It's oh, damn. I thought... Was my I... guest. I thought a yeah. battalion was like a hundred. Okay, never mind. No, a battalion's like a thousand. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Like the minimum. 
Yeah, it's, it's, I'm pretty. I'm almost certain this is a hundred soldiers that they give that she wants you to escort to Dagger. Wait, we have to escort soldiers and an ambassador. What kind the of ambassador she escorted. <laughs> Sorry, that was a question. What kind of soldiers are they? They need an escort. <laughs> I think the soldiers are there to escort the ambassador, but we're there as backup. Yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. Yeah, the ambassador, a guy named Ran Estado, refuses to uh, travel by magic. He he actually hates magic as a as a concept and wishes that the world didn't have any magic at all. And oh. um, and so as part of like um, he's the sort of guy that loves prestige though. He loves to be seen and. In order to increase his own prestige among his other lords, he's wrangled Lairal Silverhand into giving him both an adventuring party and a hundred soldiers to escort him. Like again, government so inefficient. But this is but that's the demands he's making. And if they don't give in to this demands, then his um his little town of Scornyabel is going to be you know causing problems way outside of its proportion. Compared to its important, so whatever, just what the diplomatic it? costs of keeping a lord's alliance together. Mind you, that if you have a look at the map, the guards are only going to Daggerfoot. The soldiers are only going to yeah. Daggerfoot. We're t we're taking him all the way down to Borskir Bridge, and he's going on further there. There at Borskir Bridge, he'll meet with some paladins from Elter from Eltergard, and those paladins will then take him on to Skornyvel. Eltigard or Eltigard? Uh I think Eltigard is the capital of Eltigard. Oh, okay. yeah, Eltigard's like paladin country. Yeah, yeah, it's had a huge cultural change over the past hundred years. Cool. So that's us. Yep. So that's it. Um, want to investigate? Want to interrogate the wizard? Uh, sure, uh, if we have time for that, I will use the banknote to obviously outfit myself in red Thayan robes, um, or at least as close as they can get to it, I guess. Mm. I don't think they have any holographic pictures on it that, you know, authenticate them or something. So, uh, I, yeah, I will cast Disguise Self on myself and um, make myself look like a elderly bald man with uh, black tattoos on his skull. Okay. Make, a, uh, make your deception or and a performance check. Oh, I, I should have really used deception, but anyway. Yeah, both. You have to do both. Oh, okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, and, and he falls for your ruse. Um, the, uh, so yeah, what's, uh, I guess what is your, what are your questions? Um, just to sort of speed this up, I yeah, guess, um, yeah. I guess I'm asking whether he knows about their movements, what they're coming for exactly, um, because somewhere in the bureaucracy they have failed to inform me. Oh, me too. Important. Red, red Thay and ever, right? Oh. Um, typical. Um, kept out of the loop myself. Oh, it frustrates me. I, I'm going to write a letter, a, a strongly worded letter to Thay Mount. Oh, don't even bother. They're, 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 they're not going to listen. It's, it's not worth it. Well, I time. think I might just go to Zaz Tum and tell him directly. Oh, well, look how that worked out last time. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, he tells yeah. you, um, he tells you how um, the high ups of Thay think that this is a great idea. What a what a great idea! Um, aiding this um, this grand conspiracy or the, the Dragon Spear conspiracy. How 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 is that possibly meant to work? How can we how can we possibly hold together a force of red wizards, Zentarum, and literal devils from hell? And 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 where are the trolls supposed to fit into all of this? What that's not an alliance. That's a fucking menagerie. Right. And, yeah. uh, and they're heading towards this prominent location. Um, what was the name of it again? Dragonspear Castle. Dragonspear? Yes, that's right. They're crossing the High Moors, uh, an army of, uh, of Zentarum. Uh, but that's, that's, but they, they haven't reached it yet. Uh, our, 
for, for our part, I just hope that we can find the elemental keys in time before they arrive. It will give us a, a hand up in our dealings against the devils. Yes. The uh, I don't, I'd hate, I'd hate to have the pit five. fiend dominate everything. Sorry. Uh, the, the elemental keys, of which there are five. Four. Four. One for yes. each of the elements. The key. Yes, four. Mm, uh, you are familiar with the four elemental princes of evil. Yes. Uh, of course. Wind, water, earth, and heart. <laughs> he casts, like, <laughs> dispel magic. He casts it while he's in prison. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No. <laughs> he stops that, but he stops believing you. And, um, and yeah, you get no more out of him. Yeah. I, 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 I thank him for his time, and I disrobe, and I give him uh, my robes as a pillow to which he can lean on. He hangs himself with... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was not responsible for that. Well, there goes your scroll of permit. See. Fuck! God damn it, Zephram! <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, we're about to go meet a lot more of them. I'm sure one of them will be able to uh, scribe it for you. All right, I've just nodded down. So four elemental keys, one for each element. Princes of elemental evil, the red wizards, and Tyrum and Devil are ten teaming up in the dragon's pick. This sounds like something that we're going to follow up on threads, like to the end of the earth, and completely forget about Undermountain for the next ten levels. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm glad of, that's it. I'm glad I've offered you a uh, you know something that. That does. Yeah. Once again, thank you, Arctic, for giving us these options because I, I think we were getting uh, maybe a little monotonous with Undermountain, so it's nice to have this sort of break from. I'm like, excited. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, this it, this is like the first time you it said you're going into like the Sword Coast. Yeah, and Dragonspear Castle and the Tradeway. Uh, these are yeah, these are these are classic areas that I've never really been into. I love the High Moors. Yeah. All of that. Oh, yeah. And simply because she said it would require an army for us to get our hands on that castle, we're going to get our hands on that castle without... <laughs> no, we're going to get our own army. I don't care if we have to level up to the point where we can cast Planner Binding for 30 days and then start summoning an army of demons and Planner Binding them all one by one and then march in the castle with an army of... Oh, well, Hellgate Keep's only a couple of hundred miles north if you, if you, need, <laughs> if you need demons. Well, shit, I feel like I need to pick up banishment, unless you two wizards are. I mean, obviously, when we start summoning demons and devils, we're going to have banishment. You've got to have safety precautions. You don't just summon fiends without safety precautions. I, I got my first taste of what banishment's like, because I took it on my um, sorcerer in Steve's game. Mm -hmm. And we had a, what was it called, a Nykoloth? come and attack us and first round of combat i say nope banishment end of combat yeah <laughs> yeah we we had a, yeah, a boss like... fight we had a boss fight in a different campaign i played but we ended up against a, a flame primordial and the dm was like hyping it up like the biggest boss fight of the entire campaign but we tricked him into using his legendary resistances really early on and then just immediately banished him. Nah. And the DM was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Well done. Yeah, well played. All right, Mark, yeah. I really hope that you come back anyway. Uh, this is not a regular game. As you can see, next week we'll be going on Dungeons & Dragons adventures rather than <laughs> whatever it was we were playing today. <laughs> So, Wikipedia uh, Sam adventures. <laughs> exactly. So hopefully uh, we'll see you back next week. Yeah, I got to rework this character anyway. I built them in half an hour, so. Y yeah, absolutely. And and feel free to draw on any of these guys who have the time to to give you a bit of a hand to do that. I, I linked you my um D and D Beyond account uh, or my campaign uh, on my account, which you can use to make a character. Uh, and it might be an easier way for you to get through the character process, and then all you have to do is copy and paste it later. I can help you with that as well. Oh, one more thing I wanted to ask you, Arctic, before you finish. 
Um, so I'm going to put together a list of like mundane stuff like horses and wagons that buy, and we'll do that at the start of the next session. But I want to know if um, 